Live on data tapes from Theta Station, it's the season four baddies in space. Join the stars in the stars as they vie for the most prestigious awards this side of Neptune. Ooh, and even ah, at the latest high fashion jumpsuits. Thrill at the competition of space pushball. Learn lessons about camping in space with Barry White. Most of all, root for your favorite stars in your favorite categories like best performance by a non-human, best episode, and of course, best facial hair. It happens next on the season four baddies in space. Join Rick Brooks and Mike Kogel as they explore the TV of the 70s and 80s through hand-picked episodes of their favorite and not-so-favorite series. Well, here we are in space. What do you think of space, Rick? Uh, I'm, I'm a little unimpressed so far. I must say I'm a little underwhelmed. Hmm. I was a little bit more blown away by the, the majesty and grandeur of the high seas last time. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, getting used to it. Yeah, uh, I think we, we hoped to do this on the cruise ship to the stars, of course. But mm-hmm. uh, they were already booked for another award ceremony. So we had to settle on Theta Station. Yeah. Uh, luckily, they've, you know, gotten rid of their space vampires. and That's good. Well... In fairness to them, they've done a great job making us feel welcome. Mm-hmm. They've got all the amenities, but maybe there's too many amenities. I almost feel too much like it's uh, like I'm back on Earth. So I think oh. I, throughout the show, I might wander around the observation deck a few more times and really kind of soak it in. I, I've, yeah. I've been so focused on the Batty Awards that I haven't really had time to appreciate being in space yet, to be honest. So hopefully during the show, I'll get into the spirit a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, and all of our awards will be handed out tonight by robots. I think that that's appropriate, mm-hmm. and I welcome this. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't take over the podcast, I'm perfectly fine with it. That's, yeah. When Dr. Theopolis has assured me that that won't happen. Okay, well. I, I trust him. I trust him, too. You know, as long as the uh, his evil counterpart doesn't show up, I think we're good. Well, that, yes, that's something. I think we can we can bank on everything going well with that, but I think the robots will help us, too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the after party with uh, all the space disco. Space disco is always a good thing. Yeah. And I've been increasing my stretching exercises for the last two weeks specifically for the space disco i, oh, I, I plan yeah. to show off some new moves at the after party yeah and and it's probably good to do stretching before you go into space to uh, you know compensate for the weird gravitational stuff exactly, exactly we do they do have some artificial gravity here so we're not floating which is good because it would be hard to keep the microphones where they need to be true although a uh, little look behind the curtain here i did have a wardrobe malfunction just before air <laughs> i was trying to tighten my cummerbund Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it slipped and the darn thing went flying off uh, into who knows where uh, yeah. when I was yeah. on the docking station just before I, I boarded Theta Station. So, yeah. you know, I feel a little uh, naked without my cummerbund. But Right. I hear that the uh, universe is littered with cummerbunds. Yeah, it's become a problem. Yeah. There's a big ball of cummerbunds just floating through the universe. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I, I feel bad to have contributed to it. but yeah, It happens. And maybe, you know, whoever came up with cummerbunds is, is really to blame. Yeah, well, let's, let's go with that. Yeah, because really, what's the point of those? Well, we're going to find out because I'm going with that one. Okay. <laughs> but uh, maybe I can breathe a little easier and, and hopefully it'll help me maintain my voice throughout the ceremony. I hope so, yeah. All right, so as loyal listeners know, this is our show where we hand out awards not to ourselves, but to the various uh, actors and or characters or objects that appear uh, in episodes that we talked about. Yes, we're looking back on uh, what we think was a a good season. Mm -hmm. We had an enjoyable season and appreciated the listener feedback and support. Yeah. And this is kind of our way of, of reflecting back on what we talked about and also celebrating the great television that we talked about. In our last season. Yeah. And as always, our Blue Ribbon nominating committee has come up with quite a list. Yeah. Some new categories. Some other categories have, have been taken off for now. As, as people know, these categories kind of revolve around every now and then. Yes. Depending on what shows up in our shows. Yes. Much like we appear to be revolving around some weird uh, <laughs> moon right now. I'm right. not sure where we are. That's no moon. But there's a lot going on. And the Blue Ribbon committee keeps us guessing each and every year. And I think that's what uh, helps keeps it keep it fresh well let's get into the first category outstanding youth outstanding youth Alrighty, outstanding youth would you like to read the nominees boy would i ever 
Okay. The nominees for Outstanding Youth are Soleil Moon Fry from Punky Brewster, Quincy, the character Quincy, that is, from Popeye versus the man who hated laughter. Yeah. Ralph Carter from Good Times. Mm. And the dumb kid in Chips. So we've got four nominees, four all outstanding, all of them youths. Mm-hmm. And now I believe uh, we will have a timer yep. as we deliberate. You give us five minutes? Is that what we've done traditionally? Um, yes. Is that a little much? That, um, I believe five sounds about right. Okay. Let's go with that for right. now. Uh, you know, keep in mind that time is different here in space, right? So yeah. five minutes here might be the equivalent of like three minutes on Earth. So right. we'd, we'd better make it five yeah. to be safe. I believe if you're traveling at light speed and you spend five minutes on a category and return to Earth, you'll be the same age as you were. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. But your baby will be 80? That's right, is yes. That the, <laughs> right. In fact, <laughs> if we time this right, we might get back to Earth and, and find out the answers, you know, find out the winners before we even know what the, the nominees are. Whoa. Exactly. I'm, I'm a little dizzy from that. Exactly. Well, <laughs> let's ground ourselves maybe by yeah. getting into the uh, the categories here. Um, I'll okay. tell you, uh, does anybody stand out to you, Mike? Timer has started. Um, uh, yeah, you know. What are your first impressions, too? My first impressions, the dumb kid in Chips is off the list. Yeah, he was... I um, mean, the kid was fine. The actor was fine. Yes. One might even say outstanding. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> I think it's maybe a stretch to include him as outstanding, to yeah. be honest. I think he might be showing up in another category, too. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. He, it, this isn't his, his category, yes. No. Uh, uh, Ralph Carter is very talented. We know he you know, was a Broadway star mm-hmm. in addition to uh, his work on Good Times. Uh, so I, I give him a chance. Obviously, uh, you know, he can't beat Punky Brewster for punky power. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just being darned cute. Right. And, and of course, you know, mostly holding her own against the great George Gaines. And then there's Quincy. Yes, not, not Jack Klugman. No. Who I don't think was ever young. Yeah. Even when he was young, he, he was not young, so. No, no. Yeah, even when he was, he was the kid in uh, 12 Angry Men. Yeah, <laughs> right. He, he was, a, he was I mean, our age. Yeah, sure, compared to Ed Bagley Sr. <laughs> <laughs> right, the only time Jack Klugman appeared young. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, so Quincy was uh, definitely a uh, resourceful kid. He he got a lot of a lot of lines. He you know helped to build an enormous sandwich. Yes, he was a sandwich artist. Yeah, although we questioned his some of his uh, his choices in his sandwich making. So I don't know. I, I how about you? Well, I'm 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 cutting. I would eliminate Quincy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he made an Im- impression in that episode, but not not enough in this category. I, I'm tempted to go with with Ralph Carter because. As you mentioned, he's multi-talented. Uh, he's a, a singing star as well. Mm-hmm. I, I'm tempted just because if we give him Batty, it would make him eligible for a Bigot. <laughs> Batty, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. I right. think if anybody could do it, Ralph Carter could do yeah. it. Does he have any of those other awards? No, he doesn't have any of those. Okay. He'd have a ways to go, but at least he'd have a, a, a fighting chance. Yeah. So I, I keep coming back to uh, Soleil Moon Fry. And um, I don't know, Punky Power is a, it's a strong force. It is. I, I I'm leaning towards her. Yeah. I mean, she was a phenomenon, and it wasn't the character alone that made Punky Brewster a, a phenomenon? It was George Gaines? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> you know, these awards have to be honest, but we do have to think about our two to eleven year old demographic. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. We, we def- uh, definitely want to hang on to them. So at, at any cost, yeah. And, yeah. And I think we're we're primarily considering what we discussed, and Ralph Carter was mm-hmm. not a huge spotlight part of mm. when we discussed Good Times. No, so that that's kind of a, a knock against him through no fault of his own as well. Yeah, and I may have said on the show, but sort of my impression of him just going in, and my general impression of him on Good Times was just him being there to deliver a, a quip every now and then, mm-hmm. or or quote Malcolm X. Right. That I didn't know like how many episodes were really about him. There were some, but he was uh, not even really the main, you know, right. non-adult character on a show. You could argue, yeah. Whereas Punky, you get you get some pathos from Punky, yeah. And in the episodes we we talked about, you did. You know, if our ship here runs low on uh, dilithium crystals, mm-hmm. Punky power might be might help uh, power <laughs> us back home on our on our shuttle back to uh, our home world. So, yeah, I think that that also goes in yeah. uh, in Ms. Fry's uh, favor. Uh, yeah, I think so. She gets my vote. I think so too. I, I think let's let's make this a 
an easy choice for our first. Uh... Just in time. Yes. <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> well timed. Yes. I dropped my pen, and now it's it's. Uh, Despite the artificial gravity, it's floated up to the ceiling. Oh, uh, wow. Well, I'm just glad it didn't Hopefully hit a robot will uh, be able to grab yes. it for me. Yes. Please, uh, BR-12, could you get that, please? Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you to, uh, well, you know, we got these astronaut pens. Yeah. No, oh, they, they're, they're something else, I'll tell you that. Yeah. It was a bit of an issue. Like, we didn't want to take them, but... No, no. It, this Klopas guy kept telling us to take them. Yeah. You know, I... I I kind of like yours. I, I don't, you know, <laughs> maybe after, the, if you're not using it, maybe I could. Uh, Take the pen. Well, you know, I don't, I'm just saying, you know, if you have another one. Take the pen. Not that one. Well, we, we can, we can figure that out later, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. All right. Congratulations to Soleil Moonfry. Yes. And her spacey name helps. You know. It sure did. Yes. <laughs> That's a. Uh... A nice yep. addition. Where are we going next here? Uh, one we always enjoy, the <laughs> Outstanding Non-Human. Oh, the Outstanding Non-Human. And yeah. This is always a good one, Mike. Uh, all kinds of nominees in the past. Mm-hmm. And this year's field is it's it's exceptional. Yes. It includes the animated, the very not animated, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, some things in between. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read these nominees. Yes, please do. So for Outstanding Non-Human, Tweaky from Buck Rogers. The Space Vampire, also known as the Vorvon, also from Buck Rogers. Mm -hmm. The Computer in Popeye Meets the Man Who Hated Laughter. And The Boulder in Chips. Mm -hmm. What a fascinating category, as always. Yeah. Is there a more diverse category in award shows? I don't think so. I, I really don't. I mean, every now and then you'll get a weird one in the Best New Artist for the, the Grammys. Right. But, but <laughs> I, I think overall, it, it doesn't compare to this one. Yeah. I mean, we, this time we've got a robot, a supernatural being, mm-hmm. a computer, mm-hmm. and a rock. Yeah, a rock. Yeah. But what a rock. Quite an impressive rock. When you think about the, the, the amount of trouble he put people through. It put people through. Yes. Excuse me. And at the end of that episode, it was still in charge. That's true. The Rock was essentially triumphant. Yeah. It loomed large over Milton Berle's uh, Malibu estate. Mm -hmm. It uh, thwarted the best efforts of many of California's finest. Yeah. Made a laughing stock of uh, California engineering people. It it certainly did. (laughs) And it it delivered a remarkably consistent performance through not just one, but two episodes, mind you. That was a two-parter. That's true. And the boulders stood out in each of them. So yeah, a resist, resisted a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Didn't seem to care. They got it spray painted on by that dumb kid. No, it was unflappable. Yeah, and again, that's kind of what rocks do. True, but I'd like to think that the stoicism and, and quiet dignity of the boulder, even in the, those circumstances, it really stood out to me. So yeah. a well-deserved nomination and, and mm-hmm. a legit contender here. Now the computer and Popeye. The computer, I think, was was totally overshadowed by uh, the evil, you know doctor, scientist, professor, whatever you call. Yeah. I was not as impressed by the computer. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah. not taking anything away, me, being in this category is just an achievement, but I have a tough time voting for the computer to win a baddie. Yeah. It, I mean, it was an impressive computer in that it could do quite a lot. This is true. Especially for 1972 or whatever that was. Right. But, yeah, the, just the professor's antics and, and Brutus's antics. Yeah. That kind of did overshadow, Yeah. I mean, I guess I was looking for a little bit more personality from the computer. Mm -hmm. The boulder had sort of more of like a Gary Cooper kind of thing going for it. Yeah. Uh, The computer just was kind of there. I mean, right. So. And frankly, you know, well, was the computer unaware of the recent performance of Hal in 2001? Mm. Or was he trying to avoid being like Hal? Mm. Or it, again, I apologize for assuming this computer was a he. Yeah. That's an interesting question. I don't have the answer to that, but it's it's worth uh, thinking about. And just the fact that we have to raise that yeah. leads me to think that, that maybe it's not the year for Popeye's computer, uh, or the computer in Popeye, I should say. Popeye <laughs> wanted to bust sad. up that computer. If he had known about it, he probably would have. Yeah. And, you know, it did it, it die a tragic death when yeah. that island exploded. That's true. But Maybe if they would have given us one more scene with the computer, like, or the, the computer, like, yelling in pain. Yeah. Or, you know, a end credit scene. Yeah. Computer rising from the ashes right. of the silent. 
I hate laughter. Yes. Vowing to extract revenge. Yeah. On uh, the ABC Saturday movie. Yes. <laughs> Saturday Superstar right, movie. Then, then moving into a certain uh, apartment complex in, <laughs> in California to uh, start working on its next strategy. Yes. Well... <laughs> But that didn't happen. No, none of that. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm good with uh, taking the computer off out of contention. Uh, then we've got two people uh, or two beings from the same show, the same yeah. episode, even. Right. Uh, maybe fighting against each other here a little bit, but. Yep. Uh, the space vampire was uh, unique. Mm-hmm. I will say that caused a lot of trouble. Uh huh. In fact, we should say he caused some trouble with. Uh, one of our categories, which is why we didn't have that category, the the best eyebrow category. Mm, yeah, it, it was just so overwhelmingly, right? You, you know, leaning towards him that uh, the committee decided to remove that category. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like an unofficial baddie now. Yeah, some people might be tempted to do a make good here uh, and give the Vorvon mm. this one yeah. as compensation, but I, I don't really think I, I'm not going to consider that. Mm. Yeah, he was fairly unflappable. He was, you know. He was he was consistent. He had a plan. He, he stuck to it. <laughs> right. Uh, give him that. Did he? He never spoke. Did he? Uh, as wait a minute, no, he did, spoke. He did, speak, did he speak? Yeah, he spoke. Okay. He spoke because he was he was influencing. Yeah, I just thought he was using his mind or. Oh, like, uh, like projecting. Yeah. Mentally, uh, I believe he was. I believe he was speaking. Okay. Not that you know. Obviously, the Rock didn't say anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> just uh yeah and and you know he did perform in two different he, he performed as a Borvon but also as a red light yeah oh that, that's true you know and that's impressive and he he was fairly scary which yeah i assume is uh what he wanted to you know who was supposed to be wow five minutes and we didn't even get to twicky no yeah yeah the beloved yeah uh twicky yeah and i gotta say it's tough for me to vote against twicky it's tough for me to vote against him he, he steals every scene he's in He's one of the main reasons people remember Buck Rogers, mm-hmm. and overall, he's he's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think if you asked uh, nine out of ten people about the Buck Rogers TV show, they would mention mention him as, as one of the first things that would come to mind. Yeah, I think so. And he he had some good anachronistic lines in that episode, didn't he? Well, I'm I may be mixing up uh, right, that one yeah. with some of the other ones, but <laughs> some other ones in the run that I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> so in that particular episode, I'm not sure, but I'm sure whatever he said was cool. Yeah. So um, it can, for me, it comes down to Twiggy and the the boulder from Chips. I think so. Yeah. And uh, I, I give it to Twiggy. I think more of a lifetime achievement thing. Yeah. To be honest, but uh, the boulder was great in, the, in those it, two episodes. It was, and I, I would feel good, you know, if our award show actually gave a, an award to a rock. Yeah. But. <laughs> This is maybe the closest we have come or, or ever will come, but... Yeah. It, 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 yeah, I think it's Twiggy, though. He's funny. He's got a cool voice. Yes, he's he's urbane. Yeah. And, charming. Uh, and I believe we talked about this was one of the episodes where he, the uh, actor inside him was not the normal actor. Ah, yes, yes. But still, the character... But we're talking about the character, drives. yes. Twiggy, yeah. And in this a testament it, it, to the enduring power of the character. Uh, in this episode, he was very untethered from Doctor Theopolis too. Yes, that's which, right. Uh, and he still held his own. That's right. <sighs> it's like, uh, well, no, R two D two and C three PO get separated a lot. And they do their jobs. Yeah, they, they still function yeah. fine. Well, I, I must say, maybe it's the the lack of gravity that's getting to me, but uh, I think the the space theme continues here. I, I would vote for yeah. Twiki. I, I vote for Twiki too, and one in space. Uh, it, this is a very rare occasion, but Tweaky is actually here to accept the award. Oh, this is uh, what? Oh, yeah. Well, Tweaky, oh. what, what do you have to say? Bitty, 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 bitty. Thank you, Tweaky. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you know, one thing about Tweaky you can always say is he's a very deliberative uh, person. You know, <laughs> he doesn't just like uh, fly out here, and nor did he have like a. a, a a ten-page acceptance speech or anything. Yeah, he he waits until the right moment to say something, says it, and then gets out. I respect that. Yeah, I and also uh, shout out to his girlfriend Tina, who's in the audience. Oh yes, 
came up and, and they're going to, you know, they're going to burn up the floor at that space yeah. disco. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to really work it to keep up with those two. Yeah. All right. Congratulations, Tweaky. Yes. Well done. Yep. Okay. The uh, next category is best performance by uh, someone. How, how do we usually phrase this one? The nominating committee just wrote as oneself. Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Outstanding performance when, as oneself. As I oneself. Think. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was getting too convoluted. Yeah. By someone as oneself doesn't right. make any sense. So yeah. in the past, you know, it could be like the host of a show. Mm-hmm. It could be a guest star playing oneself. Yes. It could be just somebody making a, a brief cameo. It could be a guest on a talk show. All these are, are examples of, of past nominees. Mm-hmm. We've got four good ones again. We here. do. Um, uh, fit all of those descriptors you just gave. Well, isn't that convenient? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Shall I uh, do the honors and yes. read those that are eligible for this honor? Please do. We have Barry White from Late Night with David Letterman's Camping with Barry White episode. Yeah. We have David Letterman, who was also in that episode yes. of Late Night with David Letterman. Oh, what? We have Dean Martin, who is, of course, the MC of Celebrity Roast with Dean Martin. Mm-hmm. And we have Milton Berle, who squared off against that boulder in that episode of Chips. Yeah. Which I can't say the correct name of even if uh, i try yeah boulder rap party great 50k race yeah, yeah. So 5k yeah. star yeah yeah uh, but milton burrow was playing himself in that episode that's correct so those are our four nominees all right as oneself who do you got here mike well i'm gonna raise a question about both dean martin and milton burrow okay were they really being themselves Ooh, interesting Milton Berle certainly was reading lines, mm-hmm. and I feel like he was being his persona. Yes, but it was scripted, so that, that's a you know that's a tricky situation there. True, and I don't know is was Milton Berle really that paranoid? I mean, he thought people were out to get him. Yeah, or is that just a contrivance of the writers? So you're saying you don't think you got the full width and breadth of Milton Berle in this episode? Uh, no. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Well, that's an interesting argument. I, yeah. I can see that. Uh, I, I I thought there was more of Milton Berle to me. I, I hadn't really considered it until you bring mm-hmm. it bring it up brought it up here. But um, now I guess he was kind of an unpleasant man. Yeah. In in real life, right? He was a celebrity yeah. in this episode too. I mean, he was right. making demands and, and not totally being a jerk, but being a little impatient, but flustered. I mean, yeah. He saw the boulder as an existential threat, really. Right. Okay, well, uh, but you, you share the same concern about Dean Martin? A little bit, yeah. I, I don't know. Certainly, uh, there's an air of fiction to the... Not not fiction. Uh, uh, not quite reality to mm-hmm. the roast, which right. we got into. And uh, now he did seem drunk, mm-hmm. but again, there's... You hear different stories. Is that all a put on? Well... Or was he a drunk? Or was he drunk, but also putting on drunkenness? I mean, you could say this... Well... He, Here's the thing. Okay, if we had uh, Foster Brooks in this category, that's an act. you would rule him out. Yeah. But Dean Martin played this this character right. pretty consistently for about you know <laughs> twenty thirty years. Yeah. I mean, he and was like a priest in Cannonball Run. He was playing essentially right. the same character. I'll give him points for this. Of the people on that dais laughing at what was happening, I felt like his responses were the most genuine. Mm-hmm. And, and and it seemed like he did. It. He must have enjoyed that idea right. of doing putting that together or having people put that together. <laughs> yeah, I think he, that, uh, he enjoyed that. And showing up. Yes. <laughs> and getting paid for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the tension between the show, the nature of that show and, and him is causing me some area of question. Okay, so, so are you saying you lean yeah, more towards... Yeah, I'll put an asterisk the... on him for okay. now. I, I, yeah, now you could say that he, he, even, I guess, any any celebrity playing himself or herself... I guess you could have these questions. Mm-hmm. You know, where are we getting the real David Letterman? I don't know. I think to some extent, probably not all of the real David Letterman, but uh, it does seem like he was, that's something people liked about him, that he was giving some authentic version of himself across on TV. Mm-hmm. And then I enjoyed what Barry White did there, and he was very honest about where, where his life was. And he was? He, he had that the reputation because of his songs for being whatever, the sort of sex part of it, and he kept insisting, no, you know, he's faithful to his wife. It's no, no shenanigans going on despite what people might do with his songs. <laughs> right. Apparently into camping. Yeah. And didn't have a problem telling America about it. He did not. 
No. Something that, that makes me wonder, camping in space, hmm. is that something that people do? I mean, just like you, you get dropped off on an asteroid and, and rough it for a night with maybe just like a, a helmet to keep you alive and Maybe, yeah. Suit? I could see that being a thing. I know some famous space characters enjoyed sort of the outdoors and camping things. Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe some episodes of Buck Rogers, he goes camping. Okay. Once they decided that Earth wasn't a wasteland. <laughs> And, of course, you know, at least in the movies, Captain Kirk yeah. climbs mountains and things. True. So I could see him going space camping. Yeah, making some space s'mores with you, Mr. You... Spock <laughs> and McCoy. Oh. Singing campfire songs. I would like to see that episode. <laughs> Three Actually, of them think... on a camping trip? Wait a minute, there was... Wait, was well, there one? <laughs> not, in, not in the show, not in the show. Yeah. I'm thinking one of the, the movies. Uh, oh, yeah. They might have done some singing, but... yeah. But we digress. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I, I know who I'm leaning towards, but uh, I'll, I'll let you. I'm leaning towards uh, David Letterman. Yeah, me too. He was the, clearly the star of the show and dominated the show. Much respect for Milton Berle, one of the you know the biggest uh, icons in show business history. Mm-hmm. And Barry White uh, was great, but without David Letterman, Barry White wouldn't have the chance to shine in that. And Dean Martin was was good, but uh, you know not uh, the standout part of the roast. He was sort of the I don't even know if you could say it was the glue that really held it together. <laughs> uh, you know, some other substance right. maybe. But yeah. uh, So David Letterman for me is, uh, is is definitely who I would go with here. Yeah, me too. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, this is, this is the award he's been waiting for. I'm sure, yeah. It's the finally, finally he's getting the kind of recognition that will allow him to relax. Yes. This is validation. Yeah. The, All those years yes. of... Stewing Anxiety. over not getting yeah. the Tonight Show. Right. Worrying about every episode of a show that yeah. weren't any good. I think we've righted it wrong here. Yeah. And uh, and now we can look forward to Mr. Letterman being 100% entirely at peace with his artistic legacy. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to our episode of uh, his Netflix show. Yes. <laughs> when he just talks to us about... Yeah. About the baddies. <laughs> about the baddies. Right. He'd be very curious about this, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, Dave. Uh, yeah. Excellent job in that episode and in your career, and mm-hmm. we, we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. All right. Well, just rolling along here, and we're uh, up to a classic category. Yeah, so we we think of the same one here, yeah. one of our uh, perennial favorites that does seem to keep returning. Yeah. Thank you, 70s. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 80s. Yes, we, we do have uh, the 80s will be represented in this category this yeah. year. Yeah, so this is the... <laughs> best facial hair category mm. so that could mustaches beards combinations goatees van dykes goatees, yeah uh i guess your sideburns get to the mutton chop point i think that would be eligible yeah. yes uh, um, a, a chaplain mustache yeah i, I do want to say that watched the uh, remake of murder on the orient express oh, recently mm-hmm. and if if that were a tv show from the 70s kenneth Branagh's mustache <laughs> would you know, destroy this category forever. It was so really? immense. Ooh. Now it was, I did read, read about, there are articles. <laughs> and it, it was not a real mustache. Oh. So points off for that. He just, he said he couldn't grow one like oh. that, but it, it's a thing to behold. Oh, he couldn't or he wouldn't? Uh, he said he was hormonally challenged. Okay. Right? Well, yeah. I'd like to think that he would have given it a shot. So I'll, yeah. I'll take his, take, take him for his word. Yeah. I've only seen still pictures of that. I haven't seen oh. it in HD yet. So. Yeah, in HD. And, and it, there's at least one time where he's standing somewhere outside and like the breeze catches it. Ooh. <laughs> you know, I wonder if, um, if we could get a, a print of that and see it in space HD on the Theta <laughs> station here. Can you imagine the resolution? I haven't oh. had a chance to check it out yet, but I hear yeah. that the screening room here is is right. is out of sight. I, I hope the screening room could handle it. Yeah, well, we don't need another disaster on this space station. Uh, no, we don't. You know, I mean, you know, it it they did survive the Vorvon, and of course, the Vorvon's eyebrow was essentially a giant mustache mm-hmm. in, in an eyebrow position, but that's still dangerous. Yeah, and yeah. You, you can tell. I mean, as as festive an occasion is, there's still a little bit of an edge. Yeah, I think you know yeah. based on that. It, on the bright side, security is very is very high yeah. here. And, and now, all due respect to our our lighting crew, but possibly red lighting was a bad choice. Yeah, I think it, it may have um, stirred a few emotions in some of the people on board here. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Luckily, yeah. they've they've corrected that. They've moved to a more Vorfan free lighting scheme. Yes. Well, it's it's interesting we talk about that because in this category, mm-hmm. as I, I believe you're about to tell us, uh, yeah. 
one of the people involved in that incident, I believe, is, is oh, eligible for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Let's I... uh, read these nominees here. So, best facial hair. We have uh, Ron Glass from Barney Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Mark from Dynasty, played by Jeffrey Scott. So, I have Hal Linden from Barney Miller. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Commander Royko of Theta Station, played by Christopher Stone. Yes. Uh, and he's in the audience right now. Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Thanks for all the hospitality. Yes, yes, uh, and um, uh, please do not let uh, any of our comments in this uh, category no. uh, prevent you from authorizing our return voyage home. Yeah, not that you know you oh. would or anything, yeah. but uh, or you know shutting us down in the middle of the show. Yes, pulling the plug. Yeah, yeah pulling the plug on our spacesuits that would be even oh. worse. <laughs> that could it could be fatal. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, Commander Royko, uh, you you represent your your gender well. <laughs> Your species well in space, right? And you represent facial hair well. Yeah. So you know, I would say, basically, you do everything well. Yes. One hundred percent. Yeah. At least for now. Except for listening to Buck Rogers. Well, we may. Um, I have a feeling but that, that doesn't affect this category. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Purely on facial hair, I would say, you know, excellent work, sir. Yeah. Mark from Dynasty. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, I, again, <sighs> I feel compelled to mention that this is not Lee Horsley. Uh, <laughs> And I kind of wish it were. Yeah. Which to me is enough to, to eliminate him. I, uh, yeah, and I, I believe on the episode we described Lee Horsley as a second-rate Tom Selleck. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> this guy is a second-rate Lee Horsley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, 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 that's like, what, two squared, you yeah. know, is four, four squared is 16. So it's like a 16, 16 degrees removed from Tom Selleck. Sure, yeah. So that that shouldn't be enough to win this category. Mike. No, no, uh, you, you know, in a lesser facial hair uh, oriented season, maybe. Yeah, but not when you have esteemed commander and yeah. two people from one of the best, uh, you know, pound for pound mustache shows in the seventies. <laughs> Barney Miller talking about Ron Glass, yeah. uh, Harris, and uh, Barney Barn himself, Hal yeah. Linden. Yeah. yeah. So um, for me, I would I would kind of lean towards one of those two. Mm -hmm. Me too. And. I love Ron Glass, but uh, to me, it, it's a whole package with him. Yeah. The hair, the the fashion, mm -hmm. the the attitude. Whereas Hal Linden as Barney Miller almost epitomizes the whole show, and dare I say, New York in the 1970s with his mustache. He, he takes me back to a specific place, a specific era. Yeah. And he does it so. I mean, his mustache has such gravitas. <laughs> I mean, it, his mustache is, is more than just a mustache. It's a leader of men in the precinct. So I, I got to say, Mike, I'm leaning towards Hal yeah. Linden. Well, and there was that, that uh, it, it's a deleted scene from that episode where, you know, the werewolf's going nuts and uh, Yamada's calling, you know, calling Barney. And then finally he's just like, Barney's mustache. <laughs> it got cut for time. but uh, <laughs> Yes, it was a shame. Yeah. It was a shame. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards him. Also, you know, not just the mustache, but the mustache was a big part of, I would say, personally, one of our most enjoying, enjoyable tangents on the show, which was the, should Barney, should Hal Linden have played Tony Stark or, or Doctor Strange? Strange? Strange, yes. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I, I think that should definitely, I mean, we're, we're not just celebrating facial hair and TV, we're celebrating our past season, you know, yeah. kind of. So I think that's that's another strong point in Hal Linden's favor. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way, too. We've seen Ron Glass do fine work without the mustache. That's true. Whereas uh, Hal Linden, I'm sure he's capable of doing fine work without it, but do yeah. you really need it, or have we really seen it, or would we want to? Probably I not. I don't remember ever seeing it. I've seen him with, the, like, other facial hair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever, ever seen him without the mustache. Yeah. Ooh. So... He's got a fine head of hair, too. He does. He does. I mean, um, he was genetically gifted. Yeah. Hal Linden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable with giving this one to, to Hal, Hal Linden for Barney Miller. Yeah. Uh, outstanding facial hair and really uh, something we can all look up to. He has aspirational facial hair. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well under the timer on wow. that one. A, a dominant performance by Hal yeah. Linden. Wow. Well, here we go. What will our, our Blue Ribbon uh, Commission have for us next? Uh, I'm well, they're keeping with the theme a little bit. This is the best hair category, male. Mm, okay. we're gonna, so we're going to have two. We're going to have a, a female category, too. Yes. All right. Well, you know. And, you know, we, we're talking about, uh, we generally celebrate a wide variety of hairs. And yeah. we're, we're judging on volume, appearance, mm -hmm. all sorts of things here. Uniqueness. Yes, uniqueness. Uh, well, shall I read the, uh, yes. the nominees here? Please. Okay. We have Mr. T from the A-Team. 
very distinctive yeah. look. The Silver Fox, John Forsyth from Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Dean Martin from the Celebrity Rose, yeah. as we mentioned. And Eric Estrada from Chips. Wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Okay, this could be a little tougher. This is, uh, yeah. So, what are you thinking? Uh, I was just about to, oh. to grab some of my tang, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, go, go ahead. And, but, uh, uh, no, uh, yeah. I think Dean Martin has efficient workmanlike showbiz hair, but I don't think it's going to be enough to, to hold up mm. in this category, honestly. So yeah. I would eliminate him. Okay. But uh, it's, it's a tough uh, call between the other ones, I would say. So yeah. I'm open to some discussion. I, mean, I think Dean Martin had a very nice head of hair. Oh, he did. You know, especially since you know that many of his uh, contemporaries did not have hair that nice that was real. Yeah, I think some of the, the people in that very episode yes. might have had some questionable follicle yeah. activity going yeah. on. Um, but you, you know, I'm just thinking he's a nice head of hair. He, he does. He's got. A, he's got a fine. He, he's got an outstanding head of hair. But yeah. most outstanding, uh, yeah, maybe okay. not in this category. I would put him fourth. Yeah. Now, John Forsyth. I did question his the validity of his hair. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of yeah, that, well, and I, I apologize for for that. Yeah. You, know, you know what? You, um, you speculated. Uh, I think we were safe to uh, kind of hedge our bets. We didn't want to say anything definitively, yeah. but our crack research team did. Find right. no evidence. Yeah, I think maybe it's just uh, a little too much makeup around the hairline or, or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> so or, or or gel or so, something. But you know, <laughs> uh, like uh, well, on your YouTube playlist, one of the things was a, a uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous segment where he and Linda <laughs> Evans yeah. were romping around yeah. Europe playing tennis. Right. And you know, his hair seemed more genuine there. Yeah. And it seems like it would be a lot of work to play tennis and wear a hairpiece. I would think so. Maybe not worth it, really. No. This might be a good ch- time to remind everybody, you know, when you're back on Earth, I'm not sure what the uh, connection is up in space, but mm-hmm. check out our official YouTube channel Yeah. for past episodes. And each uh, episode, we put a episode-specific playlist together of YouTube clips, including the one Mike references here, mm-hmm. a Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous clip uh, used to supplement the listening experience of us talking about Dynasty. That's right. Um, Good points, though. So we're for the purpose of this category, yeah. we're assuming that John Forsyth's hair was, uh, was legit. Real. Yeah. So I, I think his hair is similar to Dean Martin's in a way. I mean, very thick and all that. But he does wear the gray well. He does. So I, I'd leave him in contention right now. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. Mr. T is the most unique hairstyle. Yeah. The uh, Mohawk. Yeah. He was previously nominated in the facial hair category. And I feel like then maybe I, I suggested that... that you know, that, that was all like a, it's all a connected situation with him. It's hard to, yes, it's hard to isolate one part from the other. Yeah, it? but I do like that about his, like his mohawk is not just, you know, I like it that he has the ring part and then the mohawk. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> like it's connected, uh, that is, is all this, it's a, uh, a symbiotic situation. <laughs> yeah, it, it very much is. Yeah, because most mohawks, I, I guess a lot of people who, you see a mohawk and they don't have facial hair, so it, or they just maybe have a mustache or something. Right. That that to me is that's more like what you'd associate with maybe like punk rock or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas T really, uh, you really rounded out the the whole package there. And, and facial hair. Now there are periods where he's since then where he's not correct. He's removed the beard. Correct. But he's always had the mohawk. Uh, yes. I, at last I've seen, I believe yeah. so. Okay. Uh, maybe not. Quite to, to the same heights as before. Yeah, yeah. But similar, some kind of Mohawk activity going on. Yeah. And really, you know, talk about icons. Mr. T was was there, and mm-hmm. the hair was a big part of it. Yeah. Big part of it. Yeah. I mean, you had the change, the attitude, the catchphrases, but, boy, Mr. T without that hair would be unimaginable back in the 80s. He's up there for me. Yeah, I agree. He's, You know, and then Eric Estrada, I mean, you know. Well, Estrada, if we had best teeth, he would be uh, oh. <laughs> probably the number one or the runaway favorite. Right, yeah. And best hair, man. He was, I mean, it's fair to say he was almost like the male Farrah Fawcett for a while, right? I think so, yeah. And and you wonder, like, the work Ponch must have done before going to work. Yeah. So that his hair would stay that good looking after driving around in a motorcycle helmet all day. <laughs> You know, that's an excellent point, Mike. I hadn't really considered that, that he maintained that look despite uh, maintaining a, an active schedule as a as a highway patrol officer. Yeah. That is really impressive. And all the other activities. I was just going to say, yes. <laughs> he, he maintained it uh, during hang gliding, surfing, <laughs> push ball. <laughs> <laughs> Bike riding. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, mountain climbing, I'm sure he did that. Tiddlywinks, anything. <laughs> All those fad sports of the 70s. Is roller skating. About. Yes, roller skating, exactly. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. Now, one time, it, it didn't hold up, of course, the dunk tank. Well, that is true. No hair can... No hair can withstand the, the, dunk the, tank. the force of the duck, dunk tank. Yeah. That is true. Hmm. Well, for me, after hearing that, I, I've got to, I, I'd put him as a contender with Mr. T. Yeah. I, I would eliminate John Forsyth now. I think so. I, I feel like of the three, he's the least unique. Yes. No offense to our 64 to 79-year-old demographic. <laughs> right. Second we would love highest. you, too. <laughs> we love you, too. All right. After, after the 2 and 11-year-olds, yes. you're... you're the next biggest demographic. Right. So T and Estrada, I mean, they're very similar in the mm-hmm. sense that, you know, both kind of uh, burn bright and not necessarily sustained it. Managed to sustain the hair fairly well for, throughout the years, though. Yeah. Best hair. Hmm. You, you have a strong lean here? I'm going to go Mr. T. You know, that was my first choice, and I'm willing to go along with that. Yeah. I, I think Mr. T, the, the whole package, like he said. Other people have had Eric Estrada-like hair. Ooh, yes. And uh, other than, uh, you know, that time that, uh, that Arnold pretended to be Mr. T on different strokes and had like a bald cap and yeah. and mohawk thing. I, I feel like, you know, you can't, if if you were to have that hairdo, everyone would say you look like Mr. T. That's an excellent point. Mm-hmm. And he was he was paying homage to it and, and, and people still knew it wasn't the real thing. Yeah. Um, I think just the fact that Arnold did that shows how awesome the facial hair is. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember an episode where John hair. showed yeah. up at the, you know, imitating Punch by having his hair, no, you know, kind of flared out like that. I don't think he could. <laughs> no, probably not. Just, you know, I think his uh, ethically, it wouldn't be honest to who John Baker is. No, John yeah. Baker is a guy who, who, you know, rides horses. He does all those other activities, but he also rides horses, and he really wants people to go hang out at his his uh, horse place. He does. He does. And boy, I tell you though, Punch really stood out in that station. I mean. Not a whole lot of distinctive hair in that. Uh, no, no. In that group, it's not something you go to always go to cops for. Facial hair, yes. Yeah, yeah. Head, of, head of hair, head no. Hair, no, no. But still, yeah, I, I think you're right, Mike. I think Mr. T deserves this one. Yeah. All right, and it's good too because uh, I don't want to get beaten up or even just pitied. No, no. I don't, yeah. Better um, earn his respect and gratitude. So I'm going to make a suggestion. We do best female hair, and then we take a, a slight break, and then we carry on that could be good we don't want to get uh, space fatigue no we'll give everybody a chance to uh uh yeah and, and we do actually we want to take a moment to uh, remember some people yes that's true so uh that's true okay so uh we'll, we'll take a look at uh, best female hair right mm-hmm. now yeah is it my turn to read these? i think so is it it is okay well the, the nominees in this category are linda evans from dynasty mm-hmm. joan collins also from dynasty okay aaron gray this year from Buck Rogers and Jacqueline Bissett. Bissett. Yeah. I say got it right. <laughs> yes, from uh, her appearance on Late Night with David Letterman, camping with Barry White. Yeah, as herself. Wow, four uh, happening ladies, mm-hmm. attractive women with outstanding heads of hair. Where do we go here? Well, I feel like Linda Evans' hair was sort of iconic yes. at the time, but it's not a hairstyle I care for. Interesting. That doesn't necessarily eliminate her. It's just a thought. I think Joan Collins is the same kind of, I might have the same feeling mm-hmm. a little bit. I'm trying to remember her hair in that episode. It was mostly... It wasn't the full-on curly sort of perm kind of thing, was it? No, I don't believe it was. It was um, yeah. I thought it, it might have been like uh, tied up a little bit, at least uh, one or two scenes. Yeah. In fact. Yeah. And then she had the hat on at the end. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't one of the, the big glamour Joan Collins episodes, no, to be no. fair. Yeah. It was more functional... Villain, villainous and scheming John Collins in that yeah, episode. Yeah. So maybe not her best hair showcase. Yeah. Same with Linda Evans. Linda Evans was more, not quite victim in that episode, but not really yeah. full Linda Evans, not really full Crystal in that. No, she was, yeah. And she was uh, She was in a transition space. Yes, that, that's a good way of putting yeah. it. Now, when they were fighting, um, well, yeah. th- there was the incident at the end of that episode, right, with the uh, the fire. Fire, yeah. Now, the, those, who knows what... Uh, who knows what all that hair product would do oh, you know, in a flammable I, situation? I, I know. I, I, <laughs> I didn't mind to explain the amount of fire going on. That could. That, that could have uh, been a cause of that, yeah. Or maybe that's why Joan Collins, Alexis was wearing the hat. She's <laughs> like, I'm not going into a place that could possibly burn down. Right. Because a lot of guys have threatened me today. Right. 
maybe I should not put product in my hair. A wise move on her part, but yeah. ultimately uh, didn't pay off. Now, of course, neither of them would ever be caught dead wearing uh, polyester, so that issue wasn't right. Right, uh, a problem. Oh, I was just going to say, how about uh, Jackie Bissett? Uh, I, I think I've I've seen her in other uh, other areas, and uh, yeah, I mean this this was not like an iconic uh, Jacqueline Bissett hair performance. It was. F- Pretty 80s, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Kind of frizzed out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like, frizz would be a good yeah. descriptor, I think. Again, not a thing that appeals to me personally, but it does speak of the times. So I, we shouldn't hold that against it. True, true. Yeah. And then we have Erin Gray. Now, one issue there is, of course, she was, it wasn't her actual hair color. Although that may have been true for at least one of the other uh, people <laughs> in this category, too. What? Well... What are you, you know, saying? <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, Dynasty. The yeah. women were getting up there. And and one of them might have advertised hair coloring products. You know, I'm just I'm just saying uh, for the record. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm far from an expert. No. Yeah. But uh, I do not hold that against Aaron Gray. No, no. It's just that we should bring it up. It's right. there. The elephant in the room. Yeah. But I, I, she, is, she has nice hair. She does. And, and again, you know, capable of taking on, doffing a space helmet. Mm-hmm. And still having it, you know, yeah, look bouncy and and full. Yeah, that's true. So that that's that's in its favor. And yeah, I think um, part of it is in this particular episode. Remember the space vampire. Part of the the idea was that she had changed, but her hair had not changed. Mm-hmm. So she was possessed, if you will, <laughs> but her hair was not necessarily. I don't know if her hair was not possessed or her hair was was still the same. Um, but I give the hair credit for maintaining. It's Aaron Grayness, it's Wilmaness, if you uh-huh. will, yeah. despite being under the influence of the Vorvins. So you're saying maybe the hair is what allowed her to, well, or in part, Wilma to overcome the Vorvin. That and the fact that uh, she was able to blend in a little bit more and kind of, uh, you know, sneak up on people a little bit, too, you yeah. know, going around the ship because right. the hair was an essential part of her. And if the it hair is. was unchanged, yeah. even despite, you know, the, the voice being a little, uh, being a little different. <laughs> right. But if you if you saw like Wilma on the spaceship and she started talking you know, in a in a spooky voice, yeah, and maybe had like glowing eyes or something, you'd right. like, Oh well, didn't seem like her, but she's still got that great hair. So oh, so interesting. Yeah, I I fear that over time, if she'd become a Vorvan, what would have happened? Uh, that's that's too horrifying to even yeah. contemplate. Like maybe the Vorvan had hair like hers, mm. and over time it just became a giant eyebrow. Yeah, <laughs> like years of. <laughs> Space vampiring yeah. took its toll. Right. <laughs> that's that's possible. Yeah. That's entirely possible. Well, I forgot to set the timer, but uh, well, where, I, where are we at? It? I, 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 I'm going with Aaron Gray. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, the space is a big winner so far tonight, but um, deservedly so, I think. Yeah. So I, I would give it to Aaron Gray for Buck Rogers. All right. Her first batty win after a number of nominations. I think. Yes, he's been a regular part of the uh, the awards and the, the podcast, but finally yeah. a winner. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're going to take a little break here, and we'll come back and hit the, the next 18 to 20 categories. <laughs> Keep in mind that's space math. Space math. So it yeah. may not be that many. Right, it could be like four. Yeah. Stephen Bochco, Tim O'Connor, Chuck McCann, Harry Anderson, Bruno San Martino, Paul Junger Witt, Robert Mandan, Joseph Campanella, Roger Perry, Nikolai Volkov. Charlotte Ray, Neil Simon, Robin Leach, Burt Reynolds. Well, we're back. Again, a fond farewell to the people we uh, saluted just then. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep things serious with the next category. Of course. Biggest dope. Yes. (laughs) 
TV really is full of dopes, and I, I think it's good that we've established a category to point that out. Yes, and I think as a uh, maybe as a tribute to that, I, I believe the Blue Ribbon uh, Commission has, has nominated uh, extra <laughs> people for this category. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course in, in their effort to move the show right along they, they nominated more people yeah, yeah yeah that might be a little counterproductive uh, oh yeah <laughs> maybe some more space physics going on but right okay so uh, I will read these here so, uh, again the biggest dope the werewolf in Barney Miller mm-hmm. Ted Baxter from the Mary Tyler Moore show the reverend in good times our policy <laughs> Again, Commander Royko and Buck Rogers. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is giving me a dirty look right now. Mm-hmm. The fake A-team from mm-hmm. the A-team. And that dumb kid in chips. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to turn the timer on. All right, well, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the Blue Ribbon uh, nominating committee for suggesting that our esteemed commander, Royko, is a dope. Yeah, uh, I... We could, we could suggest that maybe the uh, nomination process was going on while we thought we were going to be at a different venue. Yes. That might be uh, a lie, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's hard to book uh, uh, event uh, facilities on Theta Station. Yeah. And we weren't sure that it, it wouldn't fall through at the last minute. So. I, I'll, but I, I will take this moment also to credit Commander Royko for hiring away a bartender from the uh, cruise ship to the stars, and that bartender makes a mean space teeny. Ooh, and I will have to check that out. I- Isaac the Robot. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's I period, etc. Yes, yes. I don't know what those things stand for. The <laughs> Right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, yeah. So I, uh, you know. I thought you'd been uh, indulging a little bit in mm-hmm. our, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. during our break. I know. Oh. I had some freeze-dried ice cream. It was pretty good. Yeah. But now I, I really want one of those space teenies now. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's something. Talk okay. about feeling zero gravity. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, well, yeah. interesting category. Uh, yeah. Well, it, 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 I'll just mention that uh, Commander Royko was a little skeptical of some of the events in yes. that Buck Rogers episode, yeah. hence his being here. Right. To be fair, though, many people would have been skeptical in the same situation. Yeah. And, yeah. And overall, he seemed like a good leader. I think so. So I, I don't know if I would include him as biggest dope i would rule him out okay the werewolf and barney miller uh boy is he a dope well barney seemed to think he was a dope yeah i, I don't think he really took him his, him seriously this to refresh everyone's memory this is a gentleman who claimed to be a werewolf mm-hmm. and was worried that you know he was going on terror sprees when the moon was full i think calling him a dope might just be insensitive to his mental illness true that that that's a good point. I, I would maybe eliminate him too. You know, and it's possible. Well, of course, any anyone in this category, for the most part, well, maybe not Ted Baxter, but <laughs> many of them could could be educated out of being a dope. Yeah. And in his case, he could go through some therapy and probably stop thinking he's a werewolf. Right. He he maybe not be essentially a dope. Maybe he's just a, a guy with a with an odd condition that makes him appear to be a dope in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would eliminate him. Here's a sensitive one. What about the dumb kid in chips? You know, scaling rocks and, and you know having no business being hanging around there. Yeah. That was a really ill-advised behavior on his part. Right. And and there's again going back to what I was saying. Like he doesn't seem like a he's not a stupid person. He's a person making stupid choices. Indeed. Indeed. And that you know to me is a classic dope. I think even though he's a kid, it's fair to call him out for that. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I do give him a little bit of leeway since he is a kid, though. Right. That maybe not the winner in this category because, you know, the ignorance of youth, it well, happens. So yeah. I would eliminate him. Okay. Even though, you know, it's quite an achievement to be nominated in two categories. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, for that, that smaller role. <laughs> so well, he did something you know, right. He drove a lot of the story. He that, did. He did. The, and there wasn't much story to drive, so. True. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. <laughs> so that leaves Ted Baxter... The Reverend from Good Times and the fake A-Team. Yeah, now now Ted Baxter was uh, pretty much a, a blowhard throughout much of the, the Mary Tyler Moore show's run. Yeah. In this particular episode, he was, was it the Good Time News? Yes. He was quite dopey. He was quite dopey. I, I uh, When I was reading over the list earlier, I kind of just thought, oh, just the overall Ted Baxter. But now thinking about that episode again, he he was very dopey. Yeah. yeah. It was Ted at his most uh, oblivious. Yes. And 
not not a shining moment for the character. So I, I think yeah. he's a legitimate contender here. I think so too. Now the Reverend in Good Times, he might be more wily than Dopey. Yeah, I mean we're we're or the Blue Ribbon Committee is calling him a dope. Yeah, but not an, a dope in a foolish sense, more like a ugh, what a dope, you know, I, just I kind of that maybe. negative connotation. If we had uh, biggest turkey, <laughs> which may be a future category. <laughs> That's well said. I, I agree. I, I would be fine with eliminating him for the purposes of this award. More of a turkey than a dope, really. Yeah. Now the fake eighteen. I tell you what, I'm I'm actually strongly considering them. Yeah. They're just so like, as opposed to some of these other ones, they're they're just nondescript enough mm-hmm. to be like to have dope be really appropriate for them. Like, oh, what a, what a dopes. Yeah. You know, there's not really not that anything that distinctive about him. Within the episode, within that world, they were disappointing. And within our world of just watching it, remember how let down we were just that these fake A-teamers were yeah. not, not even B-teamers. Right. They were like C-teamers. Yeah. And, you know, they hadn't studied up on the A-team to know <laughs> they're going to build contraptions. Mm-hmm. We better come prepared. No, they just showed up and let, you know, let themselves get defeated by Taffy. Yeah. <laughs> they were hardly a match for the A-team. <laughs> right. And really, mm-hmm. anybody paying close attention should have been fooled by them. Yeah. They did have some of the elements of the A team, but not enough to to be uh, worthy of, yeah. of even calling themselves that. I, I was disgusted by them, frankly. It, it kind of, to me, it boils down maybe how you depend d- define dope. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, now, to me, working against them is we don't really know much about them. True. So we don't get have a full grasp of their dopiness. That's fair enough. I mean, they're you they're know such it, lackeys. It, it, say you're not the Hannibal guy, but the BA guy and the guy in the face position who had no resemblance to face yeah you know maybe they're just guys who need a job and this is the best job they could get Mm. so is that dopey no it's more like pathetic actually it's more (laughs) more hapless when you put it like that right maybe not well Uh, i mean maybe i'm overthinking a little bit i mean ted is a bit of a buffoon yes and in this episode he really shows his dopey side in addition to the buffoony side by some of his comments and right his uh, you know, whatever he has going on with uh, with uh, Gordy mm-hmm. when they're paired together, right? His ill-timed uh, Polish joke, yeah. And yet he's not a malicious person. He's not, no. Which yeah. maybe you know makes the term dope really appropriate for him. Yeah, he's not malicious, right? We don't have him as. Uh, I mean, he's self-serving, but he's not. So when he he uh, sort of tries to bigfoot. Gordy on the broadcast, he, he is he's serving himself, but he doesn't really. Uh, I don't think he sees that it's he's not clear headed enough to see that that is also affecting someone else. Right. He generally thinks it's best for the show too. I yeah, believe. I think so. Uh, that, I think that self delusional aspect of it is what yeah. kind of makes him more in this category and not in perhaps another category that we'll have coming up. Mm. So uh, it would come down between yeah. uh, Ted and Fake A Team for me. Ted gets my vote. Okay. You know what? I'll, I'll go with Ted, too. Uh, Ted Knight was so good in this role, and, and this episode was a good Ted episode. So, But at the same time, he sure was a dope. Yes. So, Ted Baxter, I, I think, yeah, let, let's go for it. Ted, you, he, you get he, the win. I would like to see Ted Baxter win this. Yeah. Accept this award. <laughs> he would probably be very proud. He would. <laughs> he'd have, uh, you know, Murray uh, crafting his speech mm-hmm. all night for him. Yeah. <laughs> so he'd have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, an award's an award, an award, you know. Yeah. And that brings us to our next category. By the way, the nominating committee has reminded me that uh, has passed on a message that they <laughs> they left a category off the sheet. Oh, really? Yeah. The uh, Interesting. Uh, maybe we'll just do that one now. A rare uh, yes. miscue uh, by the this, Blue Ribbon panel. <laughs> this is the... Uh, uh, i got to get the wording of it right. Uh... That space teeny's kind of having yeah. a, it's, it's hitting you already, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the best poor man's Harrison Ford. This is yeah. Unbelievable that this could have been forgotten somehow. Yeah. This is usually one of the most highly anticipated <laughs> awards. <laughs> and there are only two people in this category. <laughs> uh, Gil Gerard yeah. and uh, Dirk Benedict. Okay. Uh, well, two people who in in the time were positioned to kind of be Han Solo ish. Yes. People. Now, in fairness to Dirk Benedict, that was more in Battlestar Galactica than in yes. the A team. But yes, maybe at that time it was more Harrison Ford and and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> I guess. 
you know, guys, slightly, uh, sl- kind of macho guys, but yeah, kind of swagger, swagger, smirky a little bit. Right. Self-assured. Yeah. The kind of guy that guys want to be. Yeah. In Buck Rogers, it was more clear. There are episodes where he's wearing Han Solo's costume, essentially. And uh, he, he, yeah. You know, this in his civvies. Yeah. We, we've got to think of, yeah, Dirk Benedict in terms of Battlestar to really give him full due in this category. Yeah. Although, and, you know, he... He was still Dirk Benedict by uh, A Team. Certainly, yeah. I gotta say, I I, I would go with uh, Gil Gerard. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, it, it's more blatantly Harrison Fordish. Yeah. And with the uh, contemporary element of it. And, and he, yeah, he's he's a little bit uh, a little bit like a cowboy. Right, a little roguishness to him. Yes. Like a hint of roguishness to to Buck. Yeah, I, I give it to him too. I'm glad we got through that quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hope we gave it uh, the right. It, it's due, but you know, it was it's a legitimate category. But it just happened to be—I I don't know—maybe not as competitive as one might think. Yeah. If it was Dirk and Battlestar Galactica, then it would be. Then this would be would merit a little bit more conversation, I think. Yeah. Well, congratulations to to Gil Gerard. The best was it again? Best poor man's best Harrison Ford. Poor man's Harrison Ford. Yeah. Okay, this, this this could be a recurring annual tradition. Yeah, it could the be. Baddies. Let's let's hope. There's certainly maybe at least the best poor man's or poor woman's, and then you might be able to insert a different actor there. True. Well, we'll leave that to what. the to the blue ribboners. Uh, yeah. If they can get their stuff together. <laughs> well, that only that only took a few parsecs, so that, that's that's good. So the next actual the category on our list is the biggest heel. Oh, biggest heel. Yes. Well, I believe it's my turn to mm. to read the nominees. Yeah. And I'll do so from the great primetime soap dynasty. Joan Collins, mm-hmm. Connor Mason, who was, uh, of course, the big villain on the A-Team, the, the man that hired the fake A-Team, yeah. Christopher Lee from Captain America, and yeah. Professor Grimsby from Popeye, the man who hated laughter. Oh, boy. So these are the biggest heel, or, or villain, if you will, mm-hmm. and some interesting uh, choices here, Mike. What do you think? Yeah. I'm going to eliminate Professor Grimsby. He had a diabolical plan, and he was a heel for most of that, but then he made a, a turn. He did. He yeah. did. He is, his baby face turn uh, right. probably disqualifies him for this. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Now, if we had a category for that, maybe he would uh, be a, a, a high contender, I think. Yes. Because, yes. I mean, he made a, his turn by seeing his own face and laughing. Yeah. So It was well know. executed. Now, the rest of these are all good. I mean, Christopher Lee's Miguel, first of all. Played by Christopher Lee. So that already makes him outstanding. True. And his plan was, you know, pretty awful, too. Mm-hmm. He was de-aging in the entire city of Portland. Yeah. It was diabolical. Or no, aging. Yes, yes. Accelerating the age. Yeah, accelerating the age. Uh, that's not a good idea. Any town. I've been <laughs> to Portland, and I like Portland. But, yeah. you know, this was Portland in the 70s, so I don't know what it was like then. But it doesn't matter. It, no one deserves that treatment. Yeah. Well, good call. I'm glad to hear you make a stand on that. He put up a fight against Captain America. He did. Once once he was in the crosshairs. Also, he was willing to drive a station wagon. <laughs> I mean... That's some yeah. commitment to your yeah. diabolical plan. Yeah. And the uh, just the plan, like, hiding in a prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I um, was being impressed by that one. Joan Collins as Alexis, obviously, just given how many people hated her, mm. wanted to kill her. Yeah, that that is true heat, as they say in the uh, in the wrestling business. Yeah, I mean, she did take that the you know brief stand for equal rights, but uh, true. It was her son, so right. I, I, I don't know. And I believe she used a, a now discredited slur in doing so. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, maybe makes her more heel. <laughs> <laughs> one could argue. One could argue. Yeah, and then Connor Mason, uh, in a certain way, he might be the biggest heel of all. Hmm. Because oh, he so. hired that lame fake A team. Oh yeah, that's true. He or or, or and I think the real heels there are, are writers. So. Yeah, true. For giving us a lame fake A team. Yeah, Connor Mason ruined a great premise. And I'm not sure his plan was that diabolical. In fact, I don't think it was that good a plan. No, and really, I have a hard time remembering a distinctive line or, or a lot about the character. No. To me, he didn't make much of an impression. His his actions yeah. did, but the character himself. Not much of an impression on me, so I, I don't think I could vote for him. Yeah, I think it's down to Alexis and Miguel. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, if we were going over the, like, a lifetime achievement kind of thing, Joan Collins, but uh, yeah. you know, Christopher Lee carried uh, some parts of that movie, mm-hmm. uh, helped 
help make that Captain America more distinctive than the other Captain America movie That's that we true. talked about. Yeah. Hmm. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. There's just so much else going on in that Dynasty episode. Right. That I don't think uh, Jones stands out to me as much as she normally would. Whereas Christopher Lee is kind of a, just a classic, uh, you know, really a superhero villain in that. And yeah. I give him a little bit extra credit for that. I think I would vote Christopher Lee. I'd lean him. I think so. I mean, I, I wonder what, uh, like, Alexis's, like, quest for power. Could her being in power of whatever company that was? Yeah. And whatever they did. Oil was involved somehow, right? Yes. <laughs> Could that have long-term effects on everyone that would be bad? But would those be specific to her or just, like, that business? Or Yeah, I mean, you, you ultimately know. the stakes seem a little lower. It's just yeah, inter-family squabbling. And even not even necessarily everything was that heelish in that episode. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's just, okay, so you're arguing over right. control over whatnot and who said this and, you know, who really cares? Yeah, and I, I assume Miguel, if he had had the chance, would have continued to go after other towns I believe so. to get more money. I believe so. You know? He would have extorted uh, many times over. Yeah, and of course he had his some career as some sort of revolutionary. It doesn't seem like the good kind of revolutionary. No, I don't based, think he was not uh, Yeah, good Based kind. on those other actions. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not one of those nice... Young, polite revolutionaries. Right. So maybe he, and they didn't say why he wanted this money other than, you know, money, but maybe he was going to go back to whatever country he had overthrown and yeah. set up a banana republic kind of situation. Right, right. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable giving him the best deal. Okay. Christopher Lee? Yeah. Best deal? Yep, I think. Biggest deal? Yeah. I yep. think that, that's a good one. Okay. All right, we're moving right along. Yeah. And I mean, literally. Have you, we don't, you know, this, this theta station. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fallen out of orbit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got reason to be concerned. I I, uh, I I don't mean to concern too much the audience, but if you're hearing this and you don't hear any more episodes, it means the theta station has been sucked into the black hole that people are talking about. Yes. And, uh, we might just be goners or we might have emerged into another universe. Yeah, <laughs> either way. Or if, you know, if there are two podcasters orbiting Earth as giant babies. Right. Th- that could be us. Uh, that could happen, too. Uh, we don't know. We're going to have a heck of a time getting uh, other episodes uploaded either way, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But, so. the, you know, the good thing about it is Commander Royko is not in the audience anymore. So oh, okay. If he comes up in another one of these categories. Yeah, good. We can breathe easy. So hopefully he'll get us back into orbit and everything will be good. I have faith that he will. Yeah. And, you know, he's got Tweaky to help him. Yeah, that's true. He Royko may not be the best judge of uh, paranormal situations, but he's a, he, he knows his ship. He's, he, he knows his, he's a good spaceman. <laughs> he's very pragmatic. Yes. Yes, yes he knows his, his ship. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> So where are we going next here? Uh, well, I think we're up to the we're up to some of the big categories. Oh yes. And should we do? Look at the sheet. Uh, should we do the the first time ever, or, or do you want to uh, hold off on that? Should we go to the maybe oh. some of the? Uh, no, I think. Well, uh, it depends. Should we do the music ones now or hold them off? Should we finish the ones with all with a list of nominees and then do the four that? Uh... Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's do that. So let yeah, let's do the uh, this first time ever category. Yeah, this is exciting. I'm yeah. I'm thrilled about this one. So we may have mentioned before, but we have a Battle of the Network Show's Facebook group for conversation about the show and uh, all sorts of anything from the BOTNS era is up for grabs. And uh, we asked some of the or we asked the members there to vote on the next category. So our first ever listener decided poll, and it, it was a new category too. And this category is outstanding ensemble. So the nominees were the Mary Tyler Moore Show, the Good Times, Barney Miller. And the Dean Martin celebrity roast to Peter Marshall. Mm. And the the winner, by an overwhelming majority, was the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Wow. Well, congratulations. Uh, I believe Good Times and Barney Miller got a couple votes. And, and the, we did allow people to vote for more than one category mm-hmm. if they wanted to. But uh, it was definitely the Mary Tyler Moore Show, and uh, hard to disagree with that. Yeah, there were many fine performers on there, and they worked well together. It was it was a great assemblage of talent that uh, that really gelled. So yeah. I certainly can't argue with that. And certainly, I mean, good times you might be able to argue with the gelling part. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, although it's about what happens on screen and not off, really. Right. But uh, thank you to our group for voting on that. And if you're not a member of the group and feel like joining, uh, you should, and you might get to vote in next year's baddies. That's right. Uh, you can go to our Battle of the Network Show's Facebook page, and then you'll find a very easy to find how to, to join the group. Yeah. And you could also search, I think. 
Yeah. Okay. And, and we, we'd love to have you uh, get some more people in there. We've had some good uh, discussions and some good topics mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, ideas uh, for the show going forward too, which is good. So, yeah. so thanks to everyone for participating in this, uh, this category. And yeah, I would look forward to, to having another listener category, listener voted category next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Apparently we have an extra nominee in the <laughs> outstanding male category. Well, there were a lot of outstanding males this year. Yeah. It's raining men in this category. <laughs> tell you that. Is that where we're going next? Uh, yeah, let's go there. Okay. Standing the, male. The baddie for outstanding male, and these are the nominees. Ed Asner, who was nominated for Lou Grant. Okay. Gil Gerard, mm-hmm. a previous baddie winner tonight for Buck Rogers. Hal Linden, also uh, already a winner tonight for Barney Miller. Mm-hmm. George Gaines for Punky Brewster. Punky. Previous winner David Letterman is in this category. And Red Brown All right. as Captain America. So yeah. six outstanding specimens of men here in this category who should we vote for for the the batty winner six wow there are two extra nominees in yeah category. this is it's amazing you know, well, this, this really doesn't uh our, our, if our female demographic feels that we're, we're sliding them in some of the batty categories this, this this really doesn't help i must say but n- no so blue ribbon commission um first off we can just eliminate red brown right <laughs> well red brown he he did yeoman's work in these movies. He was a uh, football player at USC. Yeah. But uh yeah, he he gave it his best. I don't think it was served particularly well by the uh, the script in the No. But tough category, Reb. Yeah. Reb's welcome on our show anytime, by the way. Right. <laughs> but yeah, because we've said so many nice things. About yes, I I think we we did, didn't we? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I you know uh, we we our crack research team took the trouble to to research his football career and oh, yeah. and found out that he didn't really have much of <laughs> yeah never mind so Reb it was, it was an honor to be nominated yeah yeah, uh, yeah. well I don't know is there anybody else you would eliminate I might Letterman partly because he won a category already ooh that's some people uh, don't good. like that style of uh, voting you know? no that's true. That, and I don't want. I'm, I'm not saying that's a. a I'm always going to use that style. I just. <laughs> I don't know. It, or or maybe he stands out because he's not. Everyone else is an actor, and he's not an actor. True. We can leave him there. The Kilt Roger, of course, also won a category already. Maybe not a, the one he would have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but he still has something to. To put on the mantle. Yeah. Yeah. And Hal Linden did too. Right. I, and I I feel confident in saying he would be very proud of that. I the think he award would. he won. I like to think he would. Yeah. Uh, the late George Gaines, uh, certainly worthy of consideration. Uh, yeah, certainly in the the uh, the baseball episode, he was the he was the star in that episode. Yes, he was a it. raconteur. Yes. He was able to carry Punky on his shoulders around Wrigley Field. He got emotional. He did. He did all those things. Yeah. That said, I would probably eliminate him. Well. <laughs> I mean, this is a, this is a heavy hitting category. It is, yeah. You know, and, and Punky, you know, it was, it did what it wanted to do, but I don't know if I can give George Gaines uh, this award okay. for outstanding meal. I, I would eliminate him. Yeah, that leaves Ed Asner. We haven't mentioned. I, he's high up on my list. He is uh, with me as well. I mean, we talked about how he he made that transition, playing the same character in two series that we you know we talked about them both this season. Was excellent in both, putting different, slightly different spins on the role in each mm-hmm. case. Uh, that that's quite an accomplishment, I think. Yeah. I just generally like Ed Asner too. Yeah. Well, who doesn't? Well, uh, uh, Republicans. Yes, he, he's got many enemies actually. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he probably has tons of people that don't like him. <laughs> but as a performer, right? Yeah. Many of us li- you like him. Yeah. For me, it's between. Three people. I would rule out Gil Gerard too. Okay. I, I would. I would go Letterman, Hal Linden, or Ed Asner. Yeah. And Hal Linden to me is uh, the epitome of a, of a solid veteran performer. Mm-hmm. Every now and then comes up and, and wins an award like this, but maybe not this time. So I would kind of eliminate him too. So thinking out loud here, it would be between Letterman and Ed Asner, two yeah. entirely different types of people. Mm-hmm. Probably have encountered each other on more than one occasion. I think so. If anybody's listening, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing an Ed Asner on Late Night with yeah. David Letterman collection make its way to YouTube uh, right. <laughs> if there's not already one. I'm more remembering him being the punchline of jokes. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, that, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> About a hairy back. The hair suit. Yes. Ed Asner made, made an appearance in a <laughs> monologue or two. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, thankfully, they're not uh, seated next to each other at a data station. Uh, yeah. I have a feeling he might have been a guest, too. No. 
Well, I'll, I'll just say I'm leaning at Esner. I'm leaning at Esner, too. I love Letterman, and and I think he deserved the award he got already. Right. But the versatility and thespianism of Ed Asner yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. Congratulations, Ed. Yes. Congratulations, Ed. Or Edward, as some people call him. Yes. In space, maybe it could be both those things. Yeah. Or neither of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That, that seems somewhat chilling. I don't know why I said that, but... <laughs> That was the original tagline for Alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In space, it could be both of those things or one of those things. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Ed Asner could uh, could pull any of that off. I think Ed, Ed Asner could have uh, he could have handled that alien. Uh, I think he would have just, just kind of yelled at him and yeah. put him in his place right away. There wouldn't have been all that nonsense about right. <laughs> running around on a ship. Yeah. <laughs> he would just like lay down the law right away. Yeah, like, he, he wouldn't have any of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that brings us to our next category, the outstanding female okay. performance by a female. And we only have four nominees in this category. Mm-hmm. Apologies for like, we don't know what happened there. Blue Ribbon Committee is always uh, you know, it's always a work in progress. That's, yeah, they they do a better job than this these uh low gravity conditions than keeping us off balance. I mean, yeah. I, I never know what to expect from them, but as I said, that's what makes it keeps it fresh. Yes. So, uh Nominees are Joan Collins from Dynasty, mm-hmm. Aaron Gray from Buck Rogers, Mary Tyler Moore from The Mary Tyler Moore Show, and Esther Roll from Good Times. I dare say there might only be four nominees, but this category might be more competitive than the male category. Mm, interesting. Well, it, it's a tough, uh, tough one to pick, I'll say mm-hmm. that. Nobody really stands out to me as somebody that I would eliminate right off the bat. No. If I had to, though, and I do, since I'm helping determine the award, yeah. Joan Collins has to go. Uh, part of it is I respect what she accomplished, but uh, I was never a big Dynasty fan. She just doesn't mean as much to me as, as some of these other ones do. Now, you said, I was quoting you, Joan Collins has to go. Joan Collins has to go. I'm adding you to our list of suspects. On the, <laughs> <laughs> burn down that cabin. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, also, we should take this moment to uh, apologize for suggesting that she was dead, that John Collins had died. <laughs> <laughs> you corrected that in the show notes, but I want to correct that to your On air, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, she's not. She's not. She's... Her sister? She's still around to uh, to appreciate the fact that we're systematically eliminating her from all these categories. <laughs> right. She was certainly the spark on that show. On the episode we watched, we, she we definitely was. discussed it, the... the it came alive when, yes. when she was on screen. Yeah, she was, no doubt about it, she was one of the biggest villains of the 1980s. Yeah. So I did just confirm, Jackie Collins died a few years ago. Okay. I think that's where my confusion is. Gotcha. 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 All right. And Gary Collins also passed away uh, several years ago, I believe. Wow. That's, that's a shame. He would be a contender for outstanding head of hair. Yeah. Yeah, he had good hair. Yeah. Good hair. Okay. So John Collins, we've eliminated. Esther Roll. What do you think about Esther Roll? Uh, I think in the episode's... The episode we watched, it wasn't as uh, strong a performance as some of the other ones that we watched when we were discussing yeah. the series. Yeah, I think the... Yeah. There was that other one we also mentioned on the show, but... Right. She was definitely really strong in that one. Yeah. I mean, she's great. Yeah. She was a force, but... Uh, I wouldn't eliminate her just yet, maybe, but she's probably third so far. Yeah. Which leaves Aaron Gray and Mary right. Teller Moore. Mary Teller Moore, an icon of television history, and Aaron Gray, an icon of... Rick and Mike history. Yes. <laughs> From anybody that's listened to this podcast right. the last three years, or whatever it's been. Yeah. Four seasons worth oh, of, uh, yeah. of lavish praise for Aaron Gray. Realize how tough this decision is. Mary Teller Moore was, was great. There's no doubt about it. Yes. The show was great. The show was a great ensemble. Mm, yeah. Buck Rogers was an ensemble too, but I will just say this. When we talked about that episode, think of how much we talked about how great Erin Gray was, her performance. Mm-hmm. It was a real showcase for her. Yeah. I think I might lean towards I, her even over you, the uh, legends of Esther Roll and uh, the great Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. And you, I believe you suggested it was a baddie baiting role. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, yes. that's certainly where I, I'm leaning to. And I, I love all these performances, but yeah, and I, I think. She deserves that, and I'm comfortable with giving her that. I'll the bet you are. Award and giving her the award, and, uh, and uh, you know. Is Aaron Gray in attendance to receive this award? Uh, unfortunately not. I mean, uh, well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Not that <laughs> she, I think giving her this award will make it any likelier that I meet her. But Well, yeah. I, I think there was a, a chance, and then when she found out where we were recording this, she said, I can't go back there. Yeah, yeah. Understandable. There's a lot of bad memory. Yeah. <laughs> 
it was it was a rough time yeah yeah congratulations aaron gray Mm -hmm. and we might see some of these other actresses again i'm not sure where but it's possibly aaron (laughs) gray's last appearance on the on the show well not if not if we have anything to say about it yeah some other guest role that we don't know about that comes (laughs) up but uh Certainly, we've hit the three major <laughs> uh, high points in your career. So, yes. uh, congratulations, Aaron Gray, and yes, you are welcome on the show anytime. All right, I think that's about enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've made our intentions clear. Yes. Intentions clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, congratulations indeed. Now, where do we go next? I believe now we're into the really end of the weeds here of the uh, various categories where everyone is eligible. Yes, and when we're ship. in the weeds in space, uh, anything goes because uh, stuff grows just all over the place in the ship. Uh, we beat the timer. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Rare. <laughs> I believe I saw like a a, a a person eating plant of some kind uh, back in the the third uh, the third level. Here. Oh yeah. Uh, I decided to just k- kept walking right past it, but uh, yeah, I I would have walked the other direction because if you walk past it, it's possible. It'll... Well, I, wa- I I briskly walked yeah. uh, past it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, actually, that's when I was adjusting my cummerbund on the go, and that's when it, it just went boom. And I, I think oh. maybe it actually might have yeah. distracted the uh, the plant, so that, that oh, might have actually good, helped yeah. me. Yeah. Right. You made sure to lace your cummerbund with a little bit of human flesh scent uh, to <laughs> distract the human. <laughs> I, I wish I had yeah. been that uh, prescient, but uh, yeah. Yeah. no, I guess I was just lucky. Okay. That, that would have been a good idea, though. I, I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we have there are four of these. <laughs> so the best theme song we've once again broken up into two. So the technically those don't have all of them. The best theme song that has lyrics, mm-hmm. which I believe is th- three songs. Yes. Uh, or best best theme that has actual lyrics, not ones we made up. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that would be Punky Brewster, Good Times, Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. Yes. And yes, I believe that is that is it. For with lyrics. Yeah, and then after that, we'll do best theme song instrumental, which is everything else. Yes, including some good ones, which we can yeah. get to as we uh, yeah. as we deliberate. All right. So should we determine this best theme song lyrics? Yeah. With lyrics? Yes. Uh, do, do you, you feel good every time you hear a punky theme song, don't you? <laughs> I don't hear it very blind, often. But just a little unkind. Sure. It's gentle. Yeah. It's uplifting. Yeah. It's got punky power. Right. And it's connection to the Cheers theme song. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which, if it were in this category, it would be, you know, very hard to. It would. It would to beat that. Yeah. This is traditionally one of our uh, our toughest categories, the theme song. But yeah. Um. I don't know. This year, I, this time, I think I would eliminate uh, Punky Brewster, though. I think so. I mean, I, I don't. I think some of its classic nature might be ironic. Hmm. Hmm. Could be. Or the other two are genuine classic theme songs. Yeah. Well, here's what it comes down to for me. What song, if I'm uh, driving to uh, driving around to uh, do errands, mm-hmm. something like that, and I put the open the sunroof and I'm blaring it on the radio, what yeah. song do I most want to be listening to? You know how it is. You you pull up, you, you go to a red light, everybody around you can hear what you're listening to. Mm-hmm. Which of these songs would I most want to be playing at the time. It's good times for me. Well, yeah, certainly in that situation, that as as you laid out that scenario, I, that does seem like a better choice there. And I generally do drive around town, as you know, listening to TV theme songs. Yeah, that's uh, we're lucky to live in a, a city that has a TV theme song radio station. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can just it's an AM, you know, it's a little hard to get, but. Uh, it's worth the effort. Yeah. Not even sure it's an actual, you know, officially licensed FCC station. No, so. no, it may not be. Maybe we've we've said too much about it, but right. uh, but we get enjoyment out of it. Yeah. The the Mary Tyler Moore show is, you know, in its own right, it's it's quite a song and it's yeah. very well remembered. Uh, and we've talked about kind of incorporating the uh, the, the opening sequences into mm-hmm. the song too, and kind of considering that as part of the package. Yeah. Good times to me has a memorable opening sequence in addition to just the song, but you know, Mary's got. Uh, you know, her throwing a cap up in the air and yeah. and all that, the, the scenes of Minneapolis. If I think if we were giving it to the sequence, I would give it to, to her hmm. or her, the show because that, that is more memorable. Well, but the, the, the you make a strong argument for good times. Let me say this too. One thing I like about this is an, another way I like to judge uh, TV theme songs is, okay, Mary Tyler Moore, more show theme. You can't, it, it's, it's a guy singing it, Sonny Curtis. It's not Mary Tyler Moore singing it. However, right. with good times, if you were, you know, willing to 
convince yourself, or maybe if you were an impressionable kid that didn't know any better, you might actually think that the Good Times theme song is being sung by the cast of Good Times, hmm. by the characters themselves. Interesting. In that case, I mean, Good Times, it has male voices, female voices singing together. You could actually picture uh, the characters sitting around and singing that song. So to me, hmm. that uh, is a little bit more uh, extra juice yeah. in favor of Good Times. And you don't think Gary Portnoy's voice is a, you know, that doesn't make you think it's Punky Brewster singing it that doesn't, song? No, no. It doesn't, no. Okay. More sounds like Brian and the Dog than Punky Brewster. I'm just impressed. I remembered his name. <laughs> very, very well done. <laughs> uh, I, I'm yeah. I think you've you've convinced me of good times. I was leaning probably more Mary Tyler Moore at mm. first, but uh, but honestly, it's easier also to remember at least parts of the Good Times song than I think than the Mary Tyler Moore show. I think so. I think if you you isolate it from the show, it's maybe better. It holds up better as a song too. So yeah. Tells a story in itself. Uh, yeah, but both both of them make you feel good. That's true. All three, really. Which is kind of odd, you know, considering the stuff they talk about in the Good Times uh, theme song isn't yeah. all that great. Yeah. <laughs> now you know you could argue. Well, people are very confused about the lyrics, but you know, it's good to have a little mystery every now and then. Bob Dylan is noted for writing his lyrics, and people don't always know what he's saying. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, let's give it to Good Times. Okay. Good times. All Congratulations. Right. So that leaves us with the best song, Instrumental. Yeah. Okay, so now that gives us, if we can uh, restate yeah. them maybe, uh, yeah. that would be Late Night with David Letterman. Okay. That would be Dynasty. Uh-huh. That would be the A-Team. Oh, boy. We're not counting the spoken word intro. No. That would be Chips. That would be Buck Rogers. We're that not w- counting the one, the version with lyrics from the No, movie. we're not counting that. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to forget that. Lou Grant. Lou Grant. Barney Miller. Uh-huh. And I believe that that about does it. The roast, I don't think, had a... No, not a real distinctive regular theme. Or... Yeah. Yeah, I think we... Well, that's 10, counting the three with lyrics. So. Yeah, because Captain America, we're not including... Oh, no, I would include that. Oh, you would? That was a good theme song. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well... So I think that... That's quite a lot to consider. Yeah, there might be something. Roast doesn't have... Oh, the Popeye, that didn't have one. Right. Yeah. That did have... It was more like the songs. ABC music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I'm just going to, uh, for myself, I'm going to maybe cross out a few. I, I I love just about all of these. I, I do too. Actually, the only one I crossed out was Dynasty. <laughs> okay. I mean, Dynasty was, uh, I believe, award-winning Bill Conti was the composer of that. You know. It's memorable. Yeah. It was it was good. But uh, yeah, I would I, I have no problem eliminating that. I would eliminate the Captain America theme because I can't remember it offhand. It, it's good. It, you know, from the same team that did the A-team. Yeah. Yes. The Mike Post and Pete Carpenter team. And I think, you know, it was it was good heroic music. Yeah. Now, was there the same one for both movies? I think so, yeah. Okay. Like it was a variation in there. Could maybe argue that it wasn't a theme song in the same way because the way they did opening credits. Were, right. Like the second one definitely opened with like that long stuff of him just driving his band around. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. And that was a different piece of music. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I, could, I, I feel like maybe we could eliminate Chips just because it's been up before. Is it the rare thing that's been up before? Yeah, yeah, that's... that's. Did it and did it win that year? Yeah, I'm not going to try to look it up. I don't think it did. No, I don't think it But I think it was close. It, I, it was in contention, yes, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, I would eliminate Lou Grant from this group. I, I really like that song. I, I, I can't quite remember it, yeah. but I really like parked up when it right was watching it i mean it was it was pretty awesome but uh you know it didn't necessarily it could have worked on other shows it wasn't necessarily tied into its theme so much or, or the theme of the show right. i don't know if it's as memorable as the other ones it's kind of cool jazzy sort yeah, of stuff yeah. yeah it was good stuff but in this category i would eliminate it so i see letterman a team buck rogers and barney miller yeah left yeah the final four here barney miller again i'm i'm hearing Night chord music when I'm thinking of Barney Miller. Boy, yeah, you, you've almost ruined that one. <laughs> I, I feel bad about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've just seen more Night Court in my time than uh, yeah. Barney Miller's. I love that Barney Miller song, but it, it's it's a little weird though. Uh, I mean, it's like the that bass part, but then like the 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 real peppy part. It it almost seems like uh, I don't know. I don't know if it fits the show as well as. Uh, it's hard to think of the show without that song, but I just don't. Right. I, I would maybe eliminate Barney Miller, okay. which might surprise that's, that's a lot of tough, people. But, but you know, it made it to the final four. Yeah. So late late night, I might. I'd feel like now all of these technically because of half song and voiceover. Yeah. The ones that are left. On the one hand, late night has the thing of every time you heard it, it was being played live by the world's most dangerous band. Mm, that's a good point. That's cool. But I also feel like it's part of the. 
I, well, they're all part of the package, but I don't know. Yeah, never mind. Then that argument's not going to work. That annou- uh, I forget that announcer's name, but his the sound of his voice and the New York shots and yeah, the whole the whole, the whole thing. thing, the audience. But uh, it it really worked well. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's it's one that people might not think of as a like memorable TV theme song. And it helped. You know, it's another one of those things that distinguishes it from other from like the Tonight Show, and that it's a rock band playing this song. Mm, mm. You know, where they were forced into that situation, but. That had that a totally different feel than the Tonight Show. True. Well, the other two are, are themes that I think really suit the the show very well. Yeah. You've got the A team that kind of gets you pumped up for some action, and Buck Rogers with that sort of majestic space opera music yeah. kind of thing that also works very well for for what it's doing. So right. I, I think I think both those themes really accomplish what they set out to do, yeah. and do it very well. And the A team has that thing. Like a, the the Magnum song by the same people had, uh, like it has these different parts to it. Mm-hmm. Like there's the the part most people remember, but then there's like these other little bits in it. Yeah, yeah. Y- you know, like, that kind of change the mood a little bit, mm-hmm. and then it kind of comes back to the yeah with, with that sort of military yeah uh, part at the beginning. And I, I lean towards A Team a little bit, just having used it as a theme song before, mm-hmm. as I mentioned on the podcast. Oh right, yeah. But I I do love uh, the other ones as too. I, I think if I had to eliminate from this group, I might. Buck Rogers is a little bit more generic to me, mm, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. The A-Team is, is a little bit more iconic to me, and, and so in its own way is, is Late Night with David Letterman. Yeah. So I think I would eliminate Buck. Yeah. I don't think, I feel like if a like a, if you were a casual viewer, like you had seen a few episodes of the A-Team, mm-hmm. and you'd seen a few episodes of Buck Rogers, mm-hmm. and then someone used a soundbite from one of those songs, which one of those would bring back, would you'd be able to identify as being from... A-Team, yeah. clearly. Right. Buck Rogers, a lot of people, sadly, wouldn't even recognize it, I think. Yeah. They might think, oh, it's one of those... Sci-, they might vaguely remember the science right. fiction, but whereas A-Team, just the, you know, those, the few bars of the, the first, you know, of the... Um, yeah, I, yeah I, think, I think A-Team is... It gets my vote. I, I, think, I think A-Team is the, is the right choice here. Yeah, and I, I believe that, finally, that uh, Mike Post and Pete Carpenter get a win. Oh, they yes. somehow didn't for Magnum. I don't remember what beat Magnum. Must have been something pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> was that this, was it Love Boat, maybe? Mm, no, that was a different season. Oh. Well, I don't know then. Yeah, I don't know offhand either, but uh, maybe our listeners can tell us. <laughs> <laughs> what happened on our own, own show. Here. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. So that leaves two categories. There's best episode, which uh, we always have to remind the listeners it's not the best episode of the podcast, yes. but the best achievement in, in, in individual episodes that we talked about. Mm-hmm. And then best series. Yes, plus Correct. our special non-competitive award yes. that we will be uh, announcing. All right, so I guess uh, traditionally we, we handle best episode first, right? I think so, yeah. All right, well, so I, I think over the last couple of categories, we've pretty much uh, gone over everything that we've talked about yeah. on the show, that is, right. in this season. So yeah. I think I would rule out Punky Brewster episodes. Mm-hmm. I would rule out the Dynasty episode. I would. Are, are we counting uh, the Popeye movie? Is, is I don't think we should, for should count that yeah, or, or no. the Captain America. Uh, okay, so so that takes care of those. Yeah. I think I would eliminate uh, chips, you know, yeah. for some of the stuff we talked about before. And really, as an episode, it, it wasn't even as good as Roller Disco. No. Although... I would recommend uh, if you haven't heard the chips episode yet of our yeah. this season, go back and listen Should, to yeah. it. It's yeah, some good did, stuff in there. I, I feel like maybe people thought it was an actual repeat, and uh, it seems to have uh, a few fewer listeners than some of the other episodes. And it's uh, yeah, we don't do it's a sequel. Here. It's not a repeat. Yes. Yeah, despite <laughs> talking about an era of TV that where repeats were a, a big part of the experience. Yeah. We don't do repeats. Correct. We just take the week off. Right. <laughs> You can you can choose to re-listen to one. Oh, of course, they're all yes. available. Yes, so feel uh, free to do that. I, I'm gonna. I would think we should eliminate the A Team episode because of how disappointed we were by yep. the fake A Team. Yep. <laughs> and time to make some harder choices now, I believe. Okay. Um, so that leaves us with Barney Miller, Mary Tyler Moore, mm-hmm. Lou Grant, yep. Buck Rogers, the Space Vampire episode, Camping with Barry White for David Letterman. Yes, good times. Yes, that was the the windfall. I believe was the mm-hmm. name of that episode. What about the uh, celebrity roast of uh, Peter Marshall? Can we eliminate that? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Whoa. 
<laughs> I just said that a little quicker than I expected. And okay, that's just what we. I, I, I have oh, a list of all of them. So okay. we, we've eliminated seven, and we have six, six episodes left. left. Yeah. Okay. So we, we've used various criteria over the seasons talking about this. Mm-hmm. For me, I don't know. It's it's still tough. Yeah, it's still tough. I don't see one runaway winner. Right. But nor do I see any at this point. It, there's just not anything that that stands out necessarily as okay. That was an all-time great episode of television necessarily. But we have yeah. some very strong contenders too. Yeah. And of these, what ones do you think are ones that are just like this was a good representative of that show? Uh, excellent question. Boy, that's the th- that's the tough thing. I think almost all of them were. Well, I think that, yeah, they're all good representatives, but some are maybe like that's the achievement more than. Oh, I see. Like it's it's good. Like just is it just it was... is it a great episode of Barney Miller? For instance, just randomly pick that, but right. or is it just a, a that Barney Miller was good and this is one of the good episodes of Barney mm. Miller? Interesting question. Like an outstanding episode of, of that show, I guess. Mm. I think. Uh, well, I think. I think as we mentioned, uh, we we generally actually when we pick episodes, we don't always pick the most uh, famous episode of that series. In yes. fact, we generally go a different direction to yeah. kind of avoid going over familiar ground. Now, in this season, I think I think many people would say that the Space Vampire was maybe one of the best Buck Rogers episodes. Yeah. I also think many people might say that about uh, the werewolf episode of Barney Miller. Maybe not in the um, the top one, but it would probably be maybe in the top ten memorable episodes for what that's worth. Uh-huh. Whereas the other ones, Mary Tyler Moore, Lou Grant, David Letterman, Good Times, those ones maybe less so uh, for whatever that's worth. Okay. But then I guess we also have to take into account the overall quality of the show. True. And that, I think that's where, unfortunately, Buck Rogers might fall compared to the, these other shows. I think that's fair. That's yeah. fair to say. Uh, uh, it, so it was a great episode of Buck Rogers. but Yes, then, but not necessarily as good as these other episodes of television. Yeah, or even maybe, like if you compared it to other science fiction TV shows, mm, mm-hmm. it might be a pretty good episode mm-hmm. of those. I'm certain there are like Star Trek episodes that are better than that or Twilight Zone or something. Right. Not that those are in our era. but Okay, I, I can eliminate yeah. Buck Rogers. And these other things are all, you know, great shows. Yeah. Or portions of their lifetime were great. It, it's it's tough to consider uh, something like Late Night with David Letterman with these uh, fictional shows. Yeah. However, I really did enjoy that episode. Yeah. I, I think one criterion could be which of these would you like to sit down and watch again? Mm. I would probably eliminate the Barney Miller at this point, maybe. Okay. As you mentioned, to me, it was it's not quite in the A rank of shows. Yeah. I mean, it made me want to watch other Barney Miller, but not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know would I want to watch that Letterman again. I mean, typically that's not how I right. deal with that kind of show. Exactly. On the other hand, I really enjoy th- thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, honestly, that would be maybe the leading contender for me as far as like something that was executed well. Mm. And, you know, maybe not every episode of Late Night with David Letterman was great, but that one, it had a concept. It had a little something for everybody. Um, and you're right. I wouldn't necessarily sit down and watch it again, but it did so many different things well, and it was, it was just so brilliant in how it was conceived and how it was executed. Just And many ways, what Late Night with David Letterman does is comment on television itself. Yeah. And in many ways, that's what that whole thing was doing. So that might be my, my lean right now, mm-hmm. is that episode of Late Night with David Letterman. Okay. It's, uh, uh, it's up there for me, for sure. I, I think the good times, I, I really like good times, but that wasn't the best episode of Good Times I've seen, and, you know, maybe not quite at the level of some of the other ones. Again, that other episode we kind of talked about, to me, was a better episode. Yeah, it almost overshadowed. I, yeah. I think that should disqualify it right there, okay. now that you mention it. That yeah. Even within our podcast, yeah, we talked about the other episode even more almost. So at least Mary Tyler Moore, Lou Grant, and yeah. David Letterman. Of those three, I would maybe eliminate Mary Tyler Moore, even though it was a very good episode. I feel like Lou Grant is like up there. It just felt like like a kind of classic kind of TV episode, mm-hmm. like that the ticking clock kind of episode. I, I do think that was an example of the show probably at its best. Yeah. Maybe not uh, one that every Lou Grant fan would, would say was the best or mm-hmm. most representative. But... but I also think it's something you could watch in isolation. I agree. That, that's you know, good. Like point. if you were teaching a class on TV or something. Right. Or just, yeah, or didn't know much about the characters of the show. It did a pretty good job of establishing what everybody's there for yeah. and what they're doing. Right. Or, or if you're doing something about the depiction of journalism on TV. Right. Like that would be a, a good go to episode. Sort of like, I don't know, you, you know, like a, it, it just is isolated in some way. That... Yes. Yeah. And it, it had a, a comedy elements, it had drama elements, mm-hmm. uh, you know, attempts at, at social relevance. Yeah. Had a little bit of everything, really. Yeah. 
and a friend of the show, Emilio Delgado. That's right. As well. <laughs> yeah, but we haven't mentioned that on the air, I don't think. But, we have uh, not, no. On uh, Instagram, when I put up a picture, just really hyping that episode, uh, and I did include his name in the uh, hashtags and Emilio Delgado Luis from Sesame Street actually uh, left a little comment he was excited he was in the picture and it was nice and then he used whatever however it is whatever second or third party app you use to retweet or repost Instagram posts he did hmm. repost it yeah I think he it was nice. He seemed to fondly remember his time in the show. He did, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was nice. That was nice. So. And we're now following his Instagram. Recently appear, appeared in a, I, th- I think, a Spanish language stage version of Don Quixote. Awesome. As Don Quixote. That's great. That's great. And as we're recording this, I believe he and a number of the other, he and Gordon and, and Bob are all at uh, Dragon Con. Oh, the Sesame Originals? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> great photo up there. Yeah. Anyway. So, Lou Grant. And Dave. Best episode here. Uh, it's a tough call. It is a tough call. I, I go to this. I, I love that, that Lou Grant episode, but I love that Dave Letterman so much. And, and I think we were just in such a good mood talking about yeah. that and had yeah. such a good time covering that on the podcast that it just seemed to come work out so well that that's really my lean, I think. Yeah, I think I think so. I think I said what I wanted to say about Lou Grant. Yeah, and said it quite well and, the, and no shame. Yeah in this category and again you know it's nice to be able to help dave with his anxiety yes yes let him take home another baddie yeah wow all right well we might have some of the same uh <laughs> ideas when we talk yep. about best series uh yeah do you think um i think so i think we could probably eliminate some of the same series or i think we could eliminate uh a team yes punky brewster yes chips yeah dynasty uh-huh the roast <laughs> Boy, I love the roast, but the fact that you're so dismissive of it says that I'm not going to fight for that one. <laughs> I like it as a series, but as, as one you could sit down and watch. Um, I like that it, is, it exists. Yeah, I, I love it, but it, it's kind of like, I don't think we gave Battle of the Network uh, stars. stars best yeah. show, best yeah. series. And I love that too. But I, I think I'd like best series to be something that you could sit down and watch like uh, yeah, like nothing but it for like two weeks or something. Yeah. I feel like we're down to the same group. Probably eliminating Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers, From your yeah. previous uh, derogatory and comments. probably Barney Miller from your previous... Oh! <laughs> not entirely derogatory comments. <laughs> My yes. Yes, yes. You're not an A-show, I think is what you said. Ooh. Oh, and that, I, I, that sounds so bad when you throw it back. <laughs> and the two movie It sort was of A things. for mustaches, but... Yes. And Punky Brewster, yes. And Punky, yeah. Well... So, that would leave... Again, so Good Times, Letterman, Lou Grant, Mary Tyler Moore. I love Good Times growing up. Loved but you, it. But in, in terms of its overall life, correct. we talked about that it went... Yes, it went downhill the last couple of seasons. Yeah. It's not a contender to me. The, the other shows were much more consistently good, so I would eliminate Good Times too. Okay. Mary Tyler Moore show, I'm rediscovering that. Yeah. And I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I don't want to say we were ambiguous about it, but I don't necessarily... I'm still not quite to the point... Although I do think it gets better the more you see it. I'm not to the point yeah. where I consider it an A-plus show like so many other people do. Mm. For me, I could see voting it for the best series, but it's, it would be tough for me to personally vote it over uh, over Lou Grant or Late Night with David Letterman. Yeah, I'm in the quandary of not having seen enough of Lou Grant. Mm-hmm. Really say. Well, see, that, that's, the, that's the thing, actually. For, so for Mary Tyler Moore, that, that's pretty, that's, there's a pretty big gap there in my TV watching because I didn't watch that a whole lot growing yeah. up. Lou Grant, like in more recent years, I've probably seen... Just to throw out a number off the top of my head, maybe like 92.64321% of the episodes. Oh, I thought you were going to say 92.3624 episodes. No, no, no. This would be space math again. Correct, correct. Although it might have gotten close to that. Just as a, uh, (laughs) maybe. Yeah, I think it had Five seasons? Yeah, I think it had, uh, no, I think it had uh, over like 100 some. Yeah, okay. So just as a ballpark figure. Yeah. I've seen that many percentage of the episode so I, i've seen a lot of that series and i mm-hmm. love the series i would have no problem voting for that for outstanding series okay it's probably of the ones left it, it's maybe one of my favorites yeah um, it's now, it's at the top of my list of the ones we talked about that i want to watch more of. right yeah and, and mary tyler moore is one that i that i do want to see that i want to see more of yeah. and i think i need to see more of and i'd like to see you revisit that too now late night with david letterman is a totally different thing if you yeah. look at it, there were hundreds of episodes of that right I mean, neither one of us has seen anywhere near probably the, the whole run of it. We've seen enough of it to yeah. evaluate it. But, I mean, let's face it, it wasn't consistently outstanding, but it was on, you know, four or five nights a week. 
had a lot of episodes and, and cranking out content on a daily basis. It's totally a different uh, achievement than it something is. like a Lou Grant. Yeah. And it's, I mean, there's, in the, the sense of it being influential, mm. it's clearly at the top of the list. I think so. It, it's legacy. Yeah, it, it's legacy on just, not just television, but just humor in general, probably yeah. in the culture. Dumb, uh, dumb podcasts like this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the top ten list alone. Yeah. Think how much, you know, that seemed to have an impact. Uh, and that was one aspect that, you know, we didn't even really emphasize, I don't think, in our when we were talking about it. No. Boy, you know, it, it, as a TV show, I mean, and that's kind of one thing we do is we celebrate TV shows for being of their era and of their time. And yeah. Late Night with David Letterman was, was both those things, yeah. in addition to being hu- hugely influential and incredibly entertaining. Mm-hmm. And not only that, with this episode, as we've already voted, it delivered with what we covered on the podcast. Yeah. I think I might have to vote Late Night with David Letterman. I think I might have to, too. Unless, we, you know, we decided to take Punky Brewster out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, don't think, uh, I don't think we've developed enough space madness uh, yet where no. we would vote for Punky Brewster <laughs> in this category. It, although it could be yeah. coming pretty, pretty oh, quickly. Yeah, if we don't wrap this up soon. We, we may be running out of uh, essential yeah. uh, supplies like oxygen. Right. Yeah, I feel I, pretty good about that. Yes, I do too. Uh, I, I think it's it's entirely deserving, and I would wholeheartedly recommend it to to people, mm-hmm. and especially if you grew up watching it and being kind of like entertained by it and seeing it the first time. Yeah. Maybe I mean you could argue that it held up for us. Obviously, we talked about it. we we were watching mm-hmm. old episodes and loving it. So for us, it held up. Yeah. I'm not so sure it would for everybody, but I, I think it's amazing that a show that like that. Right. Uh, that that aired of its time and, and was, was topical, not necessarily in current events topical, but that kind of topical can still be so entertaining today. Yeah. So I would just say congratulations to Late Night. Yeah. Well, that then leaves us with, of course, the singular, the Robert Pine Genius Award. Ah, yes. The third Robert Pine oh. Genius Award. Always good to, to revisit our old friend, uh, Mr. Pine, and, and yes. pay tribute to his fine work. Yes. By... By giving an award to someone of similar qualities. Yes. A character actor, mm-hmm. someone we're always happy to see, mm-hmm. someone who brings something unique, but also workmanlike, maybe. To yes, I think so. As, uh, work. And someone that, or her work. That, that can inspire us and, and like that you can envision that person being in other projects and just sort of is capable of taking us in different directions, I think. Yeah. Multiple directions. Yes. Uh, we had a couple of people in mind, but we did narrow it down to one, and I'll let you have the honor. Yes. Now, I do want to mention our, our previous winners, I believe, were uh, the great Leonard Lightfoot mm-hmm. and Marjo Gortner. That's right. <laughs> so uh, I do want to na- uh, mention their names, yeah. and joining this, this great company is uh, an individual who was uh, a standout in two of the episodes we talked about this year, mm-hmm. a man with a fine actor, still with us great career and we're talking about the legendary john amos that's right uh gordy on mary tyler moore and uh james evans on good times yeah and in both cases well i i think i probably said it on the show i was really happy to see him on mary tyler moore show because i was that's like one of the things i despite having seen a number of episodes i didn't remember or realize he was on there and yeah so it was good and he definitely brought a lot to his character yeah it was a pleasant surprise like just yeah. how if you remember just how delighted we were and how cool his character was in that yeah, not something. Yeah, I was I was even expecting, uh, but he delivered in that one. He almost stole that whole episode, and he was clearly one of the highlights of the good times uh, that we talked oh, about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's it's no doubt that the good times was worse off for him leaving. Yeah. And if John Amos is in something, I'm gonna at least give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And congratulations, Mr. Amos, for yes winning this is uh, the Robert Pine Genius Award. And boy, uh, I'll have to save the research on that for a pick your pine. But those two those are in two, something together. Forget about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> our, our dream cast is one yeah. day our project will Robert Pine, Aaron Gray, right. John Amos, yeah. Marjo Gortner, Leonard Lightfoot. Leonard Lightfoot. <laughs> that sells itself, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they do, I'm sure it would be great. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations, uh, John Amos, and, and thanks for. For all the great entertainment you've given over the years. Yeah. We're at the end of another baddies, end of another season. Uh, I think so. What a what a great season it was. I, I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it, Mike. Uh, working with you is a pleasure as always. And I uh, appreciate the, the fa- feedback, mm-hmm. uh, the support of our listeners. And please, let's keep it going. Uh, we've got, already got some ideas for th- our next season. And yeah. we promise uh, to be there. And uh, we'll, we'll keep at it. Yeah. And Royco, 
Again, we apologize to anything we might have said negatively about you because you got this space station back in orbit. Yeah, well done. No one got hurt. No Vorvons made it on the ship. Correct. And uh, we're going to be traveling back to Earth. We're beaming these data tapes back. Also bringing them, you know, make sure we have a hard copy. Yeah. And Please obviously, if you're hearing this, we succeeded in that. If you didn't, again, maybe the tapes didn't come back, or maybe we're in a black hole or something. Yeah. I don't know. We'll a lot figure of things could somehow. happen. Yeah. But some sort of Stargate malfunction. Yeah. Maybe there'll be alternate versions of us for, for the next season. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe we'll finally open up, cause an accident that opens up the uh, all of the Norman Lear Earths, <laughs> causes the we'll crisis on <laughs> crisis on infinite Norman Lear Earths. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not saying we're trying to do that. No, <laughs> but it could well happen. Yeah, <laughs> could well happen. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, we'll we'll see you soon on season five and. Of course, uh, keep a listen out for bonus episodes. Yep, and keep checking our uh, our website uh, and our Facebook page and social media in general for new stuff and, and comments and, and extras all up to our next season. This episode brought to you by Theta Station, Vorvon free since 2491. This episode also brought to you by Botany 5 Billion, now offering jumpsuits in silver and gold. This episode also brought to you by the SPBL, bringing pushball into the 25th century and beyond. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Battle of the Network Shows. Learn more, leave feedback, and suggest future episodes at battleofthenetworkshows.com. Follow us on Twitter at BatNetShows, and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Battle of the Network Shows.